Institute of Soybean Research, India Institute of Oil Seed Research, Directorate of Ground Net Research (DRMR), and uh, Indian Institute of Oil Seed and Palm Res Oil Palm Research, uh, to prepare a roadmap for edible oil self sufficiency. Now I invite Dr. Nita Khandekar, Acting Director, Indian Institute of Soybean Research, to welcome the participants. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, most Honorable Dr. C. D. Maisa, ex chairperson, ASRB. Uh, Dr. S. Rajendra Prasad, Vice Chancellor, U.S. Bangalore. Dr. S. K. Sharma, ex Vice Chancellor from Palampur. All the directors uh, from various oilseed uh, institutions. Our special invitees, Dr. Bhagirath, Dr. Suresh Motwani, and I see many other people who have been invited, scientists, colleagues, and uh, all the people who have joined in here. It gives me immense pleasure to see that uh, on with despite this COVID, we were able to get this together. And uh, we have a very important uh, issue that needs to be discussed, that how to get uh, self-sufficiency in oil seeds. It is most important because now India is self-sufficient with all the other crops and now all the focus runs on uh, oil seed. So it gives me immense pleasure to welcome all out here today to have this three, uh, three days deliberation on challenges uh, in research, challenges that are faced by the industry and uh, the technology transfer challenges. So I hope that we are able to uh, come up with something that is different from the normal seminar. That's why we are calling it a brainstorming session because we want to really come up with what are the issues and how do we fix them so that we can maybe in five years, 10 years, we have something that is concrete and that is doable. And uh, we have to increase the productivity. We have to increase the uh, production of our country. And just productivity is not going to, uh, you know, really make sense because the prices should be remunerative for the uh, farmers. So all these issues we need to thrash out. We need to see what is remunerative for the industry, what is remunerative for the farmers, how we can uh, focus our research and do something uh, that is uh, substantial to get uh, India on board on the roadmap of self-sufficiency. So with these words, I, without much ado, I welcome everyone, one and all, and I'm so grateful to Dr. Mai, Dr. Prasad, and Dr. Sharma, who despite their, you know, uh, the stature, I'm overwhelmed with their acceptance uh, to be here today. And I welcome you all, sir, and uh, we hope for uh, fruitful deliberations. Thank you. Anita, Anita, you can yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. So uh, we are sharing the screen now. So today is the session one yeah. on challenges of research, which will be chaired by Dr. C.D. Mai, ex-chairman ASRB, and co-chaired by Dr. S.K. Sharma, ex-VC Palampur, and Dr. S. Rajendra Prasad, VC US Bangalore. And there are total eight speakers, including the lead, lead talk by Dr. C.D. Mai, and Dr. Dinesh and Dr. Sudhakar Babu of Indian Institute of Oil Seed Research will be the repetitor of this session. Uh, now I will welcome Dr. C.D. Mai and introduce him, our chairman. Next slide. Dr. C.D. Mai, he is president of South Asia Biotechnology Center and vice president of National Academy of Agriculture Sciences. Uh, he is a firm believer of biotechnology and played an instrumental role in bringing BT cotton to India. That is the major achievement of Dr. C.D. Mai. And he has served government of India in various capacities as chairman, ASRB, agriculture commissioner in Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, as a director of Central Institute of Cotton Research, Nagpur, and vice chancellor of Maratwada Agriculture University, Parbani. He is member of African Biosafety Network of Expertise and International Service for the Acquisition of Agribiotech Applications. And he has extensive experience in plant pathology, cotton improvement and biotechnology, and epidemiology and epidemiology management. He has guided 20 PhD students and more than 38 MSc students. He is author of various books and monographs and has also published over 200 research papers in journals of repute. Uh, there is a long list of awards. We may have missed some awards here. 
सो आई एल रीड ही इज अलेक्जेंडर हमफोल्ड फेलो वी पी गोखले अवार्ड इन नाइनटी एट बसंत राव नायक कृषि अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड टू आउट स्टैंडिंग टीम अवार्ड टू थाउजेंड थ्री डॉक्टर बी विश्वनाथ अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड थ्री लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड थ्री टाइम्स टू थाउजेंड एट इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व द लेख राम मेमोरियल अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड नाइन डोडा राघव रेडी अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड टेन लीडरशिप अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड टेन अमित प्रभु मनीषी अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व आई पी एस रिकोगशन अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व सस्या सुरक्षा महानी अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व एंड ए पी मिश्रा लाइफ अचीवमेंट अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन एंड पद्म भूषण डॉक्टर करमवीर भावरा पंत नेशनल अवार्ड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन सो दीज आर द अचीवमेंट ऑफ अवर चेयरमैन डॉक्टर सी डी माई नेक्स्ट इज अवर को चेयरमैन डॉक्टर मनोज बिल वेलकम अवर को चेयरमैन डॉक्टर एस के शर्मा गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल I, it is my proud privilege to welcome our co-chairman, Dr. S. K. Sharma. He is ex-vice chancellor of C. S. K. Himachal Pradesh Agricultural University, Palampur. He has been director of N. B. P. D. R. New Delhi, and he was project director of National Research N. R. C. on D. N. A. Fingerprinting. He has also supervised the All India Research Project, All India Coordinated Research Project on underutilized crops. he is a very good teacher researcher and institutional leader with academic background in genetics crop improvement biotechnology and plant genetic resource management he has guided and supervised 12 post doc post graduation students he has won several international and national fellowships and awards like commonwealth post doctoral fellowship commonwealth academic star fellowship marie curie european commission fellowship royal society of royal society in sar international collaboration award Fellow of the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences, National Academy of Sciences, Rashtriya Udyog Ratan Awards, 2009, and Dr. Sharma is office bearer of member of several professional bodies. He has chaired the project steering committee of FAO project capacity on capacity building and regional collaboration for enhancing conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources in Asia. He has also chaired the South Asia network in plant genetic resources. and member of international steering committee of global information system on germplas biodiversity international rome italy and moreover he is the chairperson of our research advisory committee of the institute so i welcome him and i hand over the mic to dr anita so our next co chairman is dr s rajender prasad vice chancellor university of agriculture sciences bangalore so i welcome him and introduce him uh, he has also served in various capacities as dean agriculture college of agriculture sciences gkvk bangalore and as a director of icr indian institute of so uh, seed science mau as a director acting icr national bureau of agriculturally important micros mau up and as a special officer seeds in university of agriculture sciences seed research officer in the same university then as assistant professor and associate professor in university of agriculture sciences bangalore and he has handled various extramural projects uh, 18 extramural research projects and cast sub project entitled center for next generation technology in adaptive agriculture and under nahp and rkvy funded project titled development of sustainable pilot model seed platform and he has also worked as chairman nodal officer and member of several important committees and there's again a uh, long list of award like he has been awarded dr uh, kalvya krishna murthy national award farmer friend award krishik mithra saman lifetime achievement award in seed science and technology netherland government fellowship nfl fellowship by university of philippines international agriculture center fellowship by doa seed division bangkok 12 certificate of merits aiasa harit ratna award 2018 The Great Son of Karnataka Award, Kerala Krishi Vigyan Award, Karuna Award, presented by Karuna Trust for National Progress, Bangalore. So this is our co-chairman, Dr. S. Rajendra Pasa. Now I hand over the session to our chairman, Dr. C. D. Mai, to conduct the session. Dr. C. D. Mai. Dr. C. D. Mai. Dr. C. D. Mai. Sir. Uh, I would like to just. Yes. Okay. I would like to just check a back. Are you able to listen? Hello. Are yes, you sir. able to listen to me? Yes. Uh, yeah. So 
I welcome uh, all the directors of oil seed uh, institutions of this country who has done wonderful job in the past, and uh, they are now. You see, we are talking about what is called how to become atmanirbhar in edible oils. It's a very important sector. First of all, let me uh, uh, thank uh, the organizer that they have called me for this meeting, and I also welcome all my co-chairmen for this particular session. Let me first uh, thank even Dr. T. R. Sharma, who has thought over of making this as a united uh, effort of all oil seeds. Let I am not going to give you any presentation through presentation or to draw your attention to some of the facts. Let, let us see. Nirbar in food grains touching near 75% reduction in the import of already doing something like 30,000 crores uh, a few years back. But then we have a constant effort which we have made and uh, we are able to do this in pulses. But uh, the problem with the import of edible oil has not been reduced. On the contrary, it has increased by 5 million ton worth 11,500 crores now. To almost uh, 75,000 crores now with the US dollar of 10 billion. So, this increase, uh, which has over a period of time, say five years, is really a cause of concern for all of us. And therefore, the Honorable PM has always been talking about when we call up oil seeds in his mind, it is Atmanirbhar where we are trying to see that how we can reduce our import bill of edible oil. No, he, that must be in his uh, back of his mind when he calls uh, the Atma Nirbhar as our uh, the most. Since uh, basically what happens is, out, out of all 60% of the import of food items is basically on the oil seeds again. So first of all, let me congratulate your oil seeds for developing a lot of climate resilient cultivars and technology the import, uh, uh, the major jump, and uh, it's important. Sir, okay. we've lost your sound, sir. Audio, audio is not, yeah. Uh, is it audible now? It is audible now, sir, yeah. Soybean, mustard, and groundnut, they contribute nearly 60% to the domestic output. That is nearly 6 million. So, rice brown, cotton oil. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Oil farm, they contribute something like 2.5 million tons. And the rest, there is so many other like 5 million tons. And there is some problem from your side. So in spite of a very diverse oil supply, same, Lissi, Niger, there are many other three times, 15 pill supply. Again, from your side. Hello? Madam, are you able to listen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are. In between, it was going. Yes, sir. Uh, sometimes I think there is a connection from that side. There is a problem. So you tell your organizer that it should be continued. So I am just pointing out that these three crops, we have been mustard and groundnut, they are becoming very important. And uh, they are actually by predicting by 2040 that... Uh, our uh, requirement of edible oil may be about say, something like 35 million tons. Today we are having 25 million tons. Out of that you will be surprised. Nearly 10 million tons is our domestic production. So 15 million tons we are again uh, importing edible oil. And that is our basic issue. So I shall not talk about the reasons of low productivity because now you are all directors are going to talk. Are you able to listen? Yes sir. Yes sir. Yeah. Yeah. So
so uh, reasons of low productivity i will not talk because now most of your directors are going to talk about it the major productivity improvement in soybean groundnut and mustard is required because they are the three main crops which contribute nearly 60 to 65% to your oil pool and therefore if you want to become atmanirbhar i think these crops must be targeted of all these so many reasons losses due to weeds which is potentially to the tune of 30 to 40% really can be avoided and the country adopts if we adopt something like uh, ht technology or gm technology for this herbicide tolerant it is estimated that the weeds alone may actually we may increase our production by 5 to 6 million tons in the uh, due course of time now there are wide uh, prospects for improving productivity through gm technology because i am a very high high supporter of this technology and uh, i feel that the present opposition to this is again a temporary phenomenon and that should actually not uh, because this will all over automatically go once our but our research should not be stopped because any time when the situation comes that we demand i think we should be ready with the technology international patent of herbicide tolerant uh, traits particularly rr in soybean has already completed almost 20 years in and is freely available can we or we must attempt to get at least the one which is available or can we create one for us in soybean grown for nearly 12 million hectares in india which we can improve productivity from 12 17 kg per hectare to nearly double it why i call it double because if you see many countries the uh, like brazil or us the productivity has already crossed more than 2400 kg uh, per hectare and our productivity is only just half so i mean is one very important crop therefore which we can target the second is mustard i am sure that uh, mustard actually the hybrid development of delhi university has nearly completed all trials and uh, there is a lot of uh, talk of uh, the uh, whether we should permit and then there are trials and all that but uh, once there are studies but if the uh, if the dmh 11 which was originally developed by dr pentel if they may not be of high yielding now because we have a lot of development with the record but can the ten technology be now taken further to improve or bring about the new hybrids in mustard uh, that is our uh, major issue so our case of gm becomes very strong when 5 million tons of gm soya we are importing 0.5 million tons of canola also we are importing and we are consuming the same thing why then although the government is now telling that whatever material is coming we will check up gm but where will we get gm free so i have been very difficult because argentina brazil us all of them having only gm so i mean very interestingly we are also consuming nearly 1.5 million tons of cotton oil which is also a very important component of edible oil today and this is all gm in this country so it is estimated that gm cotton was when it was permitted actually i was told that nearly 20 million tons of bt cotton oil we already consumed in the last 15 20 years so it appears that these uh, technologies which are now useful need to be brought i am i am i have a lot of faith in all our directors i know because the general environment for gm technologies to be introduced has not been congenial today but it is not going to remain same even in the future i would request that the research on this aspect wherever necessary should go otherwise we have already excellent germplasm material and we should see that there are so many other areas like agronomic practices plant protection practices we need to integrate all of them and this brainstorming should really come up with very specific kind of activities which we need to do as we have done it in pulses can we have some kind of what is called as a uh, uh, path breaking demonstrations of some of the technologies right in every state where we can do it can we also have 
the uh, production of uh, the oil seed crops in the rice fallow area how many because there are almost 12 million hectares of rice fallow area and uh, some pulses are being grown there can oil seeds also grow there so this is the entire situation i think we look into these brainstorming and i am sure that uh, our uh, effort this uh, what we are now making through these brainstorming are going to be very useful in the context of uh, the discussions which we are having i want to really congratulate uh, the oil seed group as a group all of them who have come together now because this is the first time we are talking i am only worried about what are those areas for example i i was working on sunflower i know there are limitations in sunflower to increase productivity because sunflower to grow every every year in the different type of soil or every in area is not going to yield much there has to be a gap of something like 4 to 5 years to get the optimum yields of sunflower but that is not possible under indian situation and we are growing uh, these crops almost round the year so i think this uh, uh, sunflower maybe lean seed maybe sesame this may be a minor group but these are needed for certain specific purposes and maybe these are very valuable crops there we need to improve our productivity at least by doubling of them and rest to concentrate on the domestic supply if at all we have to do it with uh, something like soybean ground and mustard three crops occupy a very large area and maximum so we lost a little bit hello can the others hear me oh, can somebody respond whether they can hear me yes ma'am yeah, can hear yes, you Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Doctor Mai's uh, network is uh, slow. I think. Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Uh, in this particular conference, one of the conference people I am experiencing is productivity. There are conference almost double. Thank you very much. Hand over to the organizers. Sir, you can conduct the session, sir. Now we are giving it to you to conduct the yeah. session. We sent you okay, this. Okay. You can, as a uh, normal seminar, you can conduct the session. Okay. May I now request? Uh, I think the next speaker is uh, Rajendra Prasad. Ah, uh, good morning. Hello. Sir. Namaste. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Uh, good morning. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> listening to you. So, uh, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, kindly continue. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I request the host to allow us for sharing the slides. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, respected CD Mai sir, the ex-chairman ASRB, and also the chairman of this session, and uh, Dr. S K Sharma ji, the former vice chancellor of uh, C S K H. the kv palampur and uh, the director of uh, the indian institute of uh, soybean research and also all the directors whom i was associated when i was the director of uh, indian institute of science and also all the participants and uh, there is some problem of uh, the sound kindly check up your is not able to hear me no uh, can you hear me sir sir it's okay sir we can hear you okay okay so once again good morning to all of you uh, first i would like to congratulate madam for organizing this important uh, the brainstorming session on the oil seeds and also i would like to express my sincere thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my views and also to be the co chairman of this session uh, of course uh, dr mai sir has already explained about the what is the situation scenario of this uh, oil seed in the country and also the export and the import what is the amount of uh, the uh, import duties we are spending so here this is the oil seed crops are the important second important agriculture crops which occupies almost 13 to 14% of the crop area most of you know 
So again, here, the, we are the fifth largest oil seed producing country in the world, contributing almost to the tune of 1.4% of GDP and 1.5 uh, to 1.7 percent of national export and 15 to 17 percent of the agriculture export. So here, uh, if you look at the total scenario in the India, so the major uh, state which is going to contribute is the Madhya Pradesh, followed by Rajasthan, then the Maharashtra, then Gujarat. And if you look at the percentage of the productions, vegetable oils, it goes to the first one as the soybean, and then, uh, then rapeseed, mustard, and groundnut. So as you all aware of these uh, things, why I'm presenting this, if you look at the world scenario, of course, we are, the, we are contributing almost to the tune of six to 7% uh, of the world uh, oil seeds production, uh, followed by this is USA, Brazil, Argentina, and China. And uh, if you look at the productions and the productivity, it is uh, not almost, uh, you know, area wise, it is almost uh, to the tune of 24 to 27 million hectares, and the productivity is also remains the same. But our concern here is uh, to, if you look at the export and the imports of oil seeds, if you come to see the graph, where what is the domestic demand and uh, what is the availability and how much import and also import we are doing and what will be the per capita consumptions. If you look at these uh, graphs, I think uh, we are uh, <clears throat> you know, able to find out the, you know, what exactly the challenges we have to face and how we should address. So already Dr. Mayesar has mentioned, we have to concentrate on three important nine oil seeds that is soybean, groundnut, and also uh, the one more is uh, the soybean, groundnut, and the mustard. So in addition to that other minor crops, especially the uh, sunflower, which is the major crop in our uh, South India, that also we are worked and uh, the productivity also almost similar to the other oil seed crops. So what are the key issues? You see, we are talking about this you know, general thing. I'm going to talk about only the quality seeds and uh, availability, how we can really if you look at the earlier scenario, so the total availability of the quality seeds and the seed replacement rate was so now it is slightly improved. Uh, why in many in the few important crops like groundnut and also the soya bean, uh, the why the the seed replacement rate was uh, earlier it was slow because of this you know the multiplication ratio was low. And as a result, in case of groundnut, it was a bulky crop, which was handling was a difficult task. But how to address this one? I think Dr. Radha Krishna knows about this, how as a <clears throat> Indian of Seed Science and also other uh, crop-based institutions, we have taken a lot of measures to improve upon this and it has. Then coming to the major areas under rainfed conditions, this is the common phenomenon for all these uh, things and uh, the limited scope for the expansion of the area under oil seed crops and uh, unstable and non-remunerative price unfavorable trade policies. This is the most important thing, especially in some of the oil seed crops affecting a lot as far as the crop uh, production size concerned. Then the most, another important thing is the marketing support. So then again, the buffer seed bank for the contingency cropping, which is the one of the, the this one problem and the soil moisture conservations and drop proofing of oil seeds are lacking and lack of adequate and balanced nutrition and, and plant protection, uh, plant effective plant protection measures. And also, uh, you see, there are about, you know, almost 10 to 11 million hectares uh, we found, find the value fallow areas. Under that situations, can we you know, expand the oil seeds, uh, you know, crop, like, you know, pulses we have done, we have done this exercise uh, uh, for the speed production alone. And uh, really it has given a lot of uh, the results and uh, this is one area where we can encash to increase the oil seed productions. Next. So another issues, uh, the policy issues, what are the policy issues which we are encountering uh, is the exchange of germplasm varieties among the member countries and also without any barrier. This is one issues which has to be. Then ensure the remunerative pricing of oil seeds back with the market support. Sir, when we are talking about the sunflower, it was one of the major crop in Karnataka. Because of some of the policies and the pricing, the area is coming down. Of course, there is one more other disease that is necrosis, that is secondary. But as far as the 
market price has fluctuated that has one of the reason why it was so this is one issue which have to be addressed then the encourage of pricing of oils is based on the oil content and the quality this is one issues then effective and strong seed chain with the due accountability timely all of the seeds with the backup of the quality control here what is happening in especially in the bulk crops see like uh, groundnut and the soya bean we are continuously facing the problem with respect to the maintaining the generation systems and making availability of the quality seeds to the end users this is one and i will tell you how we can uh, you know address this issue and establishment of a strong public private partnership with the backward and the forward interlinkages so here now we are having the farmers producers organizations now government of india is uh, supporting that can we bring them here and uh, address this issue then the institutional linkage mechanisms through this krishi vignana kendras and the department of agriculture for auxiliary transfer of the technology and adoption with the back uh, backed up uh, support systems there so this is uh, the thing and how to meet the strategies to meet this challenge increasing the ssr here and the vrr so in fact uh, the in case of pulses the situation was also same 2015 Uh, when they have initiated this you know seed hub and now the srr as the varietal and also varietal replacement has increased similarly in sir uh, the oil seed also recently it was uh, uh, you know launched and of course uh, that can be taken care here one uh, important thing which i would like to mention here is the availability of the alternate variety in case of you know the groundnut the suddenly especially the southern people always looking for this kind of you know tme2 and other things there is no replacement for that though we have given the problem is the uh, the transfer of the technology and also educating the farmers here we have to bring some of the end user that is oil mill owners these are all the problems which we have encountered encountered in this uh, sunflower similarly in the soybean also Uh, of course in the soybean we have a different situation in karnataka where the crops was excellent in the till the last moment and the last moment we encountered with the total uh, the germination losses because of which we are cutting rain or precipitations that kind of uh, problems we are and uh, you know and uh, identify so for which we also from the uh, dsa earlier mahu we took certain initiative identifying uh, the A different planting windows and also off season crop raising all those things we have taken care but still we have to address this issue then the area expansion through the intercropping and promotion of oil seeds in the fallow that i mentioned and uh, a demonstrated use of low seed rate with proper time of sowing this is one thing because everybody you know the farmer say they says this is a seed rate is quite high how we should reduce when the varieties are developed uh, when we are recommending it should be based on the test weight of the seed but sometimes if the same seed rate is being done even the test weight is more then it is creating a problem especially when the government giving the subsidy there we are also having the problem so therefore we have to concentrate on this also then the most important thing is the use of micronutrients this is one thing then the post harvest management here especially in the oil seeds always lose the viability very quickly depending upon the environment here we have to work on the storage and also packing technology and uh, so for the long term storage of the same materials so again the, when it comes to the quality seed productions we have to assess the you know quality assessment through the, for the hybrids and the varieties here we have to go for the molecular methods what we are facing the problem especially when the crops is harvested and it is waiting for the got or the purity assessment it takes lot of time in that case these are all the tools which we can adopt see that we ensure the quality of that particular lot so that that those lot can be distributed then the anb actually in the atmanirbhar program sir actually there is a provision for uh, you know around 500 crores to uh, this anb keeping and other things why can't we encash those uh, things in our crops especially in the highly cross pollinated crops where the anibs play a major role in the cross pollination of the plants then uh, the enabling policy support with the favorable market prices of course yesterday the uh, you know in the parliament the 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 acts has been passed i think there is a, you know the strong uh, uh, this one is there favorability is there so that the seeds the farmers can get better prices 
and i think these policies will certainly help our farmers then the participation of the private investment in the research and the development this is the most important thing which we have to think already some of the agricultural institutions have started in collaboration with some of the private seed companies uh, for uh, you know having the collaboration for research as well as the promotion of our varieties the community seed banks this is most important for the you know uh, the crops like uh, sunflower uh, sorry not sunflower the groundnut and the soybean in fact even in the atmanirbhar program there is a provision for establishment of the community seed banks or the farmer seed banks uh, per you know a district one and they have targeted almost 650 uh, they say banks farmers uh, seed banks i think we can use those banks to keep our material and so that we can address the issue the even the last uh, person of the uh, you know uh, farmers uh, to reach this kind of farmers then organizing seed village program of course this we have already done but still this uh, tribal sub plan uh, we are promoting the seed production with the tribals uh, so training and making them to produce the seeds uh, for those location and distribute among the seeds then improve the high quality and the value additions of course it is uh, the one of the objective of the directorates they will and the institutional linkage mechanism for accelerated technology transfer this is the most important it is not only the institutions even the department of agriculture and uh, the farmers producer organizations these are all the things which we can take uh, support and do this then productivity improvement through the important interventions as dr maiser has mentioned there are two things which i would like to mention here is when you look at this uh, you know table you see the in which area we can increase the you know productivity that so we have to concentrate on varieties hybrids and the supply of the quality seeds by which we can improve to the tune of 9 to 72% in groundnut and mustard about 4 to 109% and sunflower so this is the thing and the nutrition management these two has to be you know both together and our target our action plans uh, should be on these two lines so that we can increase the productivity some of the you know seed uh, uh, treatments we are always calling smart agriculture and uh, in which we would like to say smart uh, seeds where we especially some of the seeds which are very sensitive for the uh, abiotic uh, stress conditions in that case can we think of going for the seed treatment with uh, some fungicides insecticides and also some micronutrients and it should be available yes and when it is required that is the concept and uh, now people are started giving this kind of things this technology can also be you know tried for the most of our you know uh, the uh, oil, uh, the oil seed crops again in the case of uh, the oil seeds we could see lot of uh, this uh, fungal growth because of the in case of soybean and also groundnut you could see lot of things so here we would like to see some of the uh, experimentations are there some seed treatment with the you know some kind of biofungicides that has given the protections this is an example which i am mentioning so that we can apply this technologies to maintain our seeds during the storage as well as before sowing so that we can get a good crop and get a good yield then plasma coating this is one area where the researcher can think of because this uh, this is directly plasma treated expose the seed to the high voltage plasma discharge which includes the bombardment from the ions oxygen radicals and nitrogen radicals and an assortment of charged particles here this applies the reducing the bacterial bearing rate of the seeds changing the seed core structure especially this kind of things is required for this you know crops like soybean we are trying hard to you know maintain the viability during the storage even the mechanical damage which you could observe i think this kind of technology in the future the researcher can think of this kind of thing okay next so this is the one uh, where how this technology can be treated so here already this has been done in some of the you know private uh, agencies uh, for the high value crops uh, and also uh, the very precious seed material next so how this plasma is going to uh, affect on the you know germination so this is uh, just example which i am quoting it really significantly there is an increase in the germination rate and also germination index and the vigor index 
So this we can standardize the procedure for our own soybean seeds. Next. So this is the, again duration. It is hardly if you look at this, you know, only 10 seconds, 12 seconds of plas agron plasma treatment has improved the germination almost to the tune of uh, 30 percent. So this is the kind of things I think uh, the our researchers can think of this kind of things. So these are all the technology can be in large scale adopted in the future. Next. So again, vegetative propagation of soybean plants in the hydrophonic environment. You see, always uh, my students has worked on the hydrophonics for the seed production of uh, the hybrid tomato. Similarly, this, you know, uh, some private industries, they have started working on this hydrophonics and uh, not for the commercial scale that they wanted to work on the, you know, some of the precious material and de development of uh, genetically identified plants. And uh, these are all the only in the small scale they have done. I think for the researcher, this is one area where we can think as far as they see the, the quality is concerned. Again, the advancement of generation of, uh, you know, uh, by using uh, this, uh, 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 the, what do you close that? Uh, uh, alert, uh, altering the light intensity. So this is very, very important in case of the groundnut, again, in the soybean. Why? Because, so in the soybean, what we are facing, because of the weather, during the maturity and the harvesting, we lose. So in that case, if you know the weather forecasting, can we alter the you know the light intensity so that we can prepone the uh, the uh, reproductive this one maturity can be prepone. Similarly, in case of uh, there are some reports in even in the groundnut, they can think altering this you know uh, light intensity, we can alter the maturity and also the flowering time. So this is one area where we can especially in the crops like soybean. So come back to the, the seed processing plant. Sir, actually we are facing a lot of problem with respect to the processing. The Once it is harvested, especially again in the soybean, we have done a lot of exercise and experimentations. Even then, when it is harvested, and we used to get almost 90, 91, 95% germination. When it brought to the you know processing plant, almost 5% decrease. Every operation, there will be 2 to 3% drop in this one because we know the seed, the coat is in, in such a way that is very thin and damages more. So in that case, what should be the our, you know, uh, the activities uh, to save the seeds from the damages? In fact, uh, we have tried and uh, we have done the separate seed processing plant for the processing of the soybean uh, which was uh, in the Bidar, uh, you know, uh, Talok, we have done it. It is totally, the, it minimizes the damage. We have used the rubberized, uh, you know, uh, Mukanwa hairs and also the belt so that the impact on the seeds should be minimum. So this is, a, this is one area where all computerized seed processing plant. Here, based on the physical characteristics of the seeds, we can computerize the, plant, the you know, uh, plant so that it will take care of all the the damages can be minimized and so that the germination and vigor should be intact. In addition to this, some of the seeds which can be, you know, identified through the X-ray analysis and that can also be taken very critically, especially for the breeder seeds and the nuclear seeds, we can apply this technology so that further generation, the contaminations can be minimized. Okay. So this again, actually, I included this uh, seed quality evaluation. It is a multispectral imaging in the new technology. This is, uh, I think, uh, every the institutions where the seed production, especially the breeder seed productions of soybean is being there. This kind of uh, the instrumentation is required because there is a lot of uh, discolored seeds are appearing during the, pro the production process that can be eliminated. Yes. Then farmer's participatory approach. This is one thing, this uh, many of us knows this one, but here under the present situation, farmers, producer organizations are there. So there can we take their support and make them an entrepreneur, see that this problem can be, especially the bulky crops can be, you know, addressed so that we can reach the quality seeds to the farmers. Then again, the seed banks, this I already mentioned, sir. So this is the government has planned to open seed banks in 650 districts. So here the farmer himself will own the things and 
the monitor will be done by the krishi vignana kendras and also some of the department people how to maintain all technical support will be given by this this is one area where we can promote uh, uh, for the production of uh, oil seeds so gene editing again this is one area again in the people so here gene edited seeds uh, by the every crop is going to be get by 2030 this is the predictions so here there will be a productions uh, will be increase almost to the tune of uh, 100 to 400 million tons here the traits which we are looking and uh, we can design is for the disease resistant disease uh, drought tolerance and also for the improved yield this is one area we can think next then robotics of course this is a era of it sector so why can't we use this some of the because when the area is small the manual you know labor is a scarcity then we can think we can use for the harvesting picking weed control and also autonomous moving pruning seeding so all those things especially in the crops uh, where is a huge area there especially certified seed production foundation seed production this can be taken care so this is one technology so this uh, this is a swagbot had built agriculture robots so it is uh, capable of inspecting this uh, crop that means where are the off types and also to what are the true true types and weed removal and yield calculations everything will be done by this here it's a sensor based this kind of uh, things can be introduced in our seed certification system because now the individuals cannot visit entire lot can we take the support of this in fact our university is working with one of the software company to develop the software where the robots or the you know drones can go and search the off types and indication will be given that will be communicated to the the farmer so that he can remove the off types here again the drones here for the application of these drones Uh, that for soil and field analysis crop spraying health so these are all the things which you all know but uh, this can be applied in our seed production system as a result we can minimize the cost of uh, seed and uh, we can uh, give the seed material to the farmer at the affordable prices so this is uh, one technology again i mentioned uh, the how the the robots the scanners will scan the entire inspect this inspection of 160 acres field is less than 15 minutes so it gives what are the different types of plants is uh, you know uh, different from the what we have set so next next so again the pollinators uh, so we also thinking of going for the pollinate drones this is all the artificial drones wherever there is a pollination is required can we think of so that effective the filling of the seeds and get the pure seeds okay so telematics sir this is one area where we can because we have the data we have the data from this one and we have the system one is production in it one is the processing in it one is the you know uh, the inspection in it so can we monitor pooling together total sitting at one place this is one area just it has i got in my mind so how our present technology can be used starting from sowing till it each reaches the farmers next so again blockchain technology sir this is a new technology how we can bring in the seed uh, you know supply chain see in fact uh, the seed new seed policy there is a transparency every process should be transparent there will be so this way every transactions starting from processing till the seed quality assessment it can be monitored efficiently commercially communicated across the entire supply chain so we can identify where the the lapses or the errors so this is the blockchain technology we can adopt in the system yes so how we can reach the farmers this is online app seed quality so now it's already being used in some of the other purpose so here my intention is you know uh, we give the report on the spot to the farmers so that immediately he can take the corrective measures it will be there both corrective measures and also what are that to be attended so that can be given on the spot sitting at your office this is one thing and the e reports across the lab so now what we are doing you see they will take the blood samples for our human testing they will give the report to our sms maybe by evening similar system you would like to introduce in the seed quality assessment so that the availability of the data will be very quick so that they can dispose the material very quickly next 
So we from the University of Agriculture Science, sir, we have uh, released one Bij Aadhar app, wherein he can access the farmer can access what are the kinds of uh, the uh, the uh, different uh, the private sector, public sectors are there in the seed business. What are the types of varieties and the crops they are growing? What will be the package of practices? What are the advanced technology and where it is available? Even the franchises. This we have done it for our Karnataka region. This kind of apps can be you know done so that the delivery system and also the technology can be made available to the seed producers so that they will be utilize this kind of things. Again, e beach cultivar. This is a private organization already developed. These are all the kind of uh, technologies which we can think of. Oh, sure. Time, yes, I think we have. Just yes, the last, last, the last slide, sir. So this is the seed hub, sir. Here, one thing it's a, a good thing which we are really, you know, sir, done because we have the good example success stories in case of pulses. But here, uh, in the last, the again the creation of seed processing plant has been done in this case. My submission is. So instead of creating the seed processing plant, which has already created and the you know uh, the pulse hubs, uh, can we use that one? This money can be diverted for the any other advanced uh, you know infrastructure creations, uh, maybe cold storage or something like that. It will be good, sir. So with this, uh, so this is the last one, sir. So how how we were in the past and the present and the future? Future will be yeah. you know communicating and collecting and making available to the farmers. With this, thank you very much, sir. This is thank you, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Yeah, I think uh, you have given a complete panorama yeah. as to what are the opportunities that exist for the scientist. Yes. I must uh, congratulate you for a very wonderful and a very comprehensive talk that you have given. Thank you, uh, I think there may be a few questions, but I will take it at the end. You are going to be with us for some time? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. that would be fine. Yes. Now I will invite uh, one, uh, one special talk. Uh, Dr. R.K. Arora is here around. Dr. R.K. Arora, who is the <laughs> executive officer. Sir, uh, he, he has requested to uh, have his talk in the last. I forgot to inform you. He okay. Okay. to change the timing here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, therefore, then I will start now the presentation of each director. I think first uh, I will call the director of IIOR, that is Indian Institute of Oil Cities in Hyderabad, uh, Dr. M. Sujata. She is around here? I'm there, sir. Yeah. Uh, kindly begin and you have 15 minutes. Kindly yes. reserve some yes. time so that we can have discussion at the end. Okay? okay so, okay. 15 16. Please start, Dr. Sujata. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing it, sir. Uh, respected Dr. Mai, sir. Sir, actually, it would be very difficult to speak after you speak because you have covered everything, all the major issues what we are confronting in oil seeds with regard to the imports, exports, and everything. But then... Uh, Given this opportunity, I'll just present before you like whatever advances we have made and where we stand right now and what are the challenges facing them, all six crops which we are dealing with at IIOR. So as uh, seen in this particular slide, the productivity is the key issue with regard to CCM, sunflower, linseed, Niger, safflower, sir. These are all below one ton per hectare, which we need to address. And uh, genetic gain in these crops is the key for success of these crops. Barring caster, where we have around two tons, what we have achieved, remaining crops, it is far below 0.5. So that is the problem what we are facing. Then uh, when we see the compound growth rates of different oil seed crops, it is really a pathetic situation where the area is declining drastically. And uh, then uh, ICR uh, has asked us to understand the reasons why there is a decline and all that in the areas. Uh, there is a drastic decline in all these crops, sir. Although there is enhancement in the productivity as we see from this graph. So this is one more key area. One is the low genetic gains, what we have achieved over the past 50 years. Second thing is the drastic area decline under these crops. Then uh, the key concerns what we face are the rain-fed production. As we all know, 72% is under rain-fed ecosystem. Then uh, when we talk of these crops, these are with the small and marginal land holdings. 
and uh, low SSR, as Dr. Rajendra Prasad has suggested, then inadequate and imbalanced nutrition, because these are all energy rich crops and what we have done, I will uh, let you know. And then uh, all these crops also, we have a low level of mechanization. And uh, with regard to value addition and by byproduct utilization, we are still at an infancy, I can tell. And uh, the ever increasing comp competition from remunerative crops like cotton, maize, chickpea. And uh, this is one of the prime reasons for the shrinking oil seeds area. So whether there is any possibility of area increase in these crops, we can see. And uh, so against these issues, we have been developing strategies and technologies for soil moisture conservation, increased seed production and all this, which I'll be presenting, sir. So coming to the yield enhancement in these crops, we have developed the benchmarks for all the varieties and hybrids, what we are developing, and uh, we have reached to a certain extent, sir. Like in case of castor, we thought four tons should be the ideal one because it has potential up to six tons per hectare because mostly castor is taken up under the irrigated zone in uh, Gujarat and Rajasthan. Then safflower, uh, initially it was 0.5, but now we have the varieties and uh, hybrids reaching up to two tons per hectare. And oil was one of the major issues. And now we have cultivars with, uh, and uh, so we have the benchmark of 32% oil. And uh, the same, we are targeting 1.5 tons per hectare. So for each and every crop, we have defined the benchmarks against which we are developing the cultivars. And apart from that, there is a scope for developing the speciality type varieties like the high oleic types in sunflower, safflower. And need of the hour is to develop white and bold seeded system for the export market. And linseed with dual purpose, both for fiber, which is having a lot of demand in the international market, and um, high linoleic acid types also for the industry. So as on date, uh, we have uh, 47 varieties and hybrids of castor, of which 24 are in the seed chain. Sunflower, we have 62 varieties and hybrids, safflower 38, and uh, CCM and all. So the thing is, uh, if you see now, with the initiative of the NFSM and all, we are working on the SRR, SRR and the BRR. So most of these recently released varieties and hybrids are in the seed chain. But whereas in sunflower, there is very little uh, that we could do because the private participation has completely ceased in research on sunflower, sir, for the past three years. So that is the major concern what we have now. So how we can bring in. So uh, that is a key issue what we have. So coming to the portfolio of the varieties and hybrids what we have released, we are concentrating on the biotic stresses also. And uh, six uh, hybrids have been released in castor and five varieties for different agroecological regions. And these are in the seed chain. Similarly, with regard to safflower, uh, we have developed uh, varieties for uh, major diseases and pests. And um, these are in the varietal chain as we have seen the BS indenser. And uh, three of them are the central releases and two are the state. So on the varietal front, we are strong enough to develop the varieties and hybrids re uh, re required for different niche mark niches. But then the key problem is with regard to some of these issues. Sir. So with regard to hybrids of sunflower, we have developed uh, some of these hybrids, but if you see the breeder seed indent, we do not have the demand for some of these hybrids. This is basically because we are not able to compete with the private sector hybrids, what we had earlier, and the declined uh, private sector involvement in uh, this one. Uh, research in sunflower is one of the major areas, then how to revive it and bring back the glory of the crop. So we are targeting for early maturing hybrids in case of sunflower. Then coming to varieties of CCM also, we have developed quite a few with resistance to the major biotic stresses. Then in case of uh, Niger also, two varieties have the CCM. Yeah. In case of uh, linseed, sir, uh, there is some sort of disturbance. Sir, uh, there is a release of an edible type also, TL99 with uh, Cooperation, collaboration with Park uh, TL99 and Edible. I'll mute all, sir. Uh, so that you can unmute yourself. Sujata, unmute yourself. 
Sujata? Please continue. Sir, in case of linseed also, we do have uh, quite a good number of varieties for uh, through biofortification and uh, various diseases and pests also. And also the varieties for the utra cultivation. So with regard to the varieties and hybrids, we are uh, quite advanced. But uh, the thing is the genetic gains, what we expect, we are not up to the mark. That is the key area where we need to work at least with these six crops, barring uh, castor. Sir, I will not go much into the increasing SRR and VRR because already Dr. Rajendra Prasad has uh, already indicated what we need and all. But one uh, key point here is when the support was given, it was for the infrastructure and also to have the revolving fund from this project. So that is the initiative with which this program has been started. And emphasis is on less than 10 year old varieties and hybrids and uh, seed production through should be through participatory and certified seed production. So this has uh, started during the year 2018, 19 and 1920. So nodal officer is the director IOR. So when you have can see the seed production, we have produced uh, around uh, 42,339 quintals of seed of all these major oil seed crops through 33 seed hubs. And this is the type of allocation what we have got for this particular program, sir, to strengthen the seed hub activities and providing quality seed to the farmers. So. For this, we are uh, highly obliged to NFSM for uh, supporting this sort of project for oil seeds, which they have initially started for pulses and expanded it to oil seeds. So with this uh, support, we could develop uh, quality seed labs in uh, different places. This is one of its type in KVK Nimpit, what we have done for sunflower and CSA. Then uh, with the seed production activities, you can see linseed seed production at different regions where we have these activities. And we also have the participated, participatory hybrid seed production in case of castor in some of these areas. So these are some of the types which we have done with the support of NFSM for improving the SSR and the VRR. Sir. Then coming to the integrated crop management, we all know these are some of the key issues what we have to delve upon and where we stand now and what we need to do. So coming to the production technologies for each and every crop, we have developed the agro techniques. Uh, for the past uh, two decades. Like in case of castor, when we th think of uh, rabi castor, we have developed the agro techniques for the rabi castor and the drip fertigation technology also. And all the uh, uh, agronomy and the plant protection technologies also have been uh, developed and then advocated to the farmers. And in case of sunflower, we have developed agro techniques for paddy fallow cultivation, then balanced nutrition with sulfur and boron spray. Then coming to safflower also, we have, uh, there is a problem with the spines and all that. So there the demand was for the combined harvester. So these have been developed. And then we have the technologies for various aspects, sir, like with regard to the varieties and hybrids and management of the major diseases and pests. Just then uh, in case of CSAM also, the major focus right now is on the paddy fallow cultivation and organic CSAM is on the rice, sir. So we are developing protocols and uh, technologies for organic system cultivation. Then in case of Niger, strike, cascuta is a major problem. So we have developed the technologies on how to manage cascuta. And this is uh, the type of uh, cultivation what we have in one of the spots in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Then uh, for striga, which is a major problem in Niger, we have developed the technologies also. And similarly, in case of linseed, where we target the utera cultivation, then the agro techniques have been developed and including linseed butterfly, which is a major path pest on linseed, we have the integrated management tactic, tactics for it. So with regard to drought proofing, as we all know, 72% of the oil seeds area is under rainfall condition. So when we talk of the in imports, we need to address this particular issue also, sir because only mustard and castor are under irrigated conditions, whereas groundnut, soybean, sunflower, and other oil seeds are all predominantly rain-fed. So we have been developing land configuration and soil moisture conservation techniques, and then uh, harvesting of excess runoff in farm ponds and its reuse. So against this, we have developed a lot of techniques like the counter cultivation for all the crops, broadbed and furrow, which I need not elaborate. But if you see the yield increase when we use limited irrigation and through micro irrigation systems, 
then uh, the yield increase is very very high like 17 to 53 percent we can realize in safflower and 22 to 13 sunflower so this is a type of small intervention taking from a rain fed cultivation to limited irrigation this is a type of uh, advantage we have in yield then this is the impact of irrigation has been studied across years so as i've told only rapeseed mustard and uh, castor are under uh, irrigation and uh, this is the type of yield increase what we get from each of the crops with limited irrigation so there is a need to have the area under oil seeds with limited irrigation sir some sort of and coming to the nutrient management also a lot of studies have been taken up so we have developed technologies for uh, the uh, major as well as the micronutrients as well and uh, boron in fact uh, has been played a significant role particularly in case of sunflower and we have developed uh, technologies for the soil test based fertilizer application as well so coming to this only one small intervention in oil seeds uh, use of sulfur at uh, sulfur at 15 to 30 kg per hectare if we can use it in all the oil seeds cropping systems we can get uh, at least 1 million ton of uh, additional oil and we can have a saving of 10000 crores from the saving on the foreign exchequer so simple intervention of use of sulfur in oil seeds is a key sir then boron application in sunflower when you see the yield increase is more than 30% and test weight also has increased with boron application so our prime minister has been advocating about the use of soil health cards and all that so we have successfully demonstrated the site specific nutrient management studies in case of sunflower and then we are doing it for several other crops also at the direct rate then uh, as i have told you the area is declining the major challenge is to have area expansion in oil seeds at least for these six crops which we are dealing and we have earmarked the potential uh, districts also for crop expansion for each of these crops where we have the potential so the increased uh, area could be with intercropping and extending to paddy and other fallows and extending to non traditional areas so where all and how much area can be captured with these sort of interventions we can see so with regard to cultivation in rice fallow areas we have earmarked so potential area we have 2.5 million hectares sir under rice fallows and expansion in non traditional areas for these crops including saline situations we can uh, aim at uh, 1.18 million hectares these have been worked out carefully and then uh, we also have developed the techniques for rice fallow system and technologies are in place if you have to extend it we need not take we have to just take the technology to this to improve the area under the oil seeds so then come getting over okay pardon me sir so increase the area under uh, intercropping also we can target an area of 3.1 million hectares under uh, through intercropping and several remunerative intercropping systems have been developed in different oil seed crops like uh, castor groundnut linseed and uh, safflower and all but right now with the changing cropping situations and uh, dynamics of it we need to develop intercropping systems with perennial crops and other profitable systems and also with the competing crops what we have rather than going for the age old uh, methods what we have developed and the intercrops what we have defined sir so that is the need of the hour we need to improve upon this also and uh, as i have indicated in the non traditional areas rabi castor is picking up and this is one such uh, intervention of our iaor and an initiative taken up and where the castor is being grown in the kaveri delt as a replacement for paddy and sugarcane in tamil nadu so we uh, have developed lot of uh, inm and ipm pa uh, packages also for uh, most of the major diseases like wilt and botrytis and here i have mentioned all the major this and uh, then we have developed... sum up Vijata, But... kindly sum up uh, time is over yes sir, yes, sir. that's why i am going so with regard to small farm mechanization also we have developed based on the crop it could be a selective mechanization in some of the crops and in some of the crops complete mechanization has been done in case of linseed so these are some of the successes what we have with regard to the selective mechanization also what we are thinking about then coming to the transfer of technology that is the weakest linkage between research and extension and uh, uh, already when you see the fld is what we have conducted 
you can see the percentage yield gap, particularly with regard to crops like CCM, Niger, and through intercropping. So these need to be addressed. Sir. And uh, this already Dr. Rajendra Prasad has presented. So we are developing the decision support systems also, and it was a success in case of controlling botrytis in castor. And uh, one more key area where we need to work, at least with these six crops, is with regard to the value addition. There is a lot of scope for developing the byproducts from these. And uh, here, this is a success story of organic linseed. If you can see the net monetary return, sir, it is uh, so high for linseed, which we don't expect. So the organic linseed is sold at rupees 90 a kg and roasted linseed at 200 per kg. So we have developed a lot of linseed products and there is a need to upscale the production of these products. And uh, if you see China, sir, the entire value chain is addressed, starting from the leaf, petals and uh, everything. And then they produce a lot of lignin supplements. But if you see the same thing in case of India, we are marketing only the primary product, the seeds. But uh, when you see the derivatives or the value added products are produced elsewhere, like uh, uh, CCM lignans are produced in Florida and then uh, flax lignans are also produced elsewhere. But whereas we are confining ourselves only to the seed, but uh, we need to develop on the invest on the value added products from all these oil seed crops so that these become more competitive and remunerative rather than what we see. And we have been talking about the exports, sir, uh, imports of 75,000 crores. But when you see these crops have the potential in the export market also like CCM, castor oil. So this is the key where we have and where we have to capture our markets. So export also has to be improved for this and then uh, we have to develop the value added products also in case of this. So I have just given the way forward what we can see. But uh, the need of the hour, sir, uh, we have to prioritize the impact also of these crops with regard to the crops and we need to have investments in value addition, particularly for high-end products like the lignins and all, which are which we have. These are the treasure troves, sir, like clean seeds, CCM and all. And also to foster partnerships with industry and academia to make this more remunerative and competitive. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sujata. I think uh, you are given a very wide and good coverage of the entire situation. And uh, I'm sure that uh, each director will now focus on the specialized crops uh, which they are working on. I will call upon now Dr. Radhakrishnan. Is he around there, Radhakrishnan? Yes, sir. Dr. Radhakrishnan, director of yes, uh, yeah, Groundnut. Please allow me to share the screen. Uh, may I call upon Dr. Radhakrishnan? Please allow yeah, me please. to share the screen. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I would be talking about uh, groundnut. Sir, groundnut we have about uh, nearly. Dr. Radhakrishnan, your uh, screen is showing Zoom. It's not showing the PowerPoint. It's not showing. Okay, let no, me. It's showing Zoom screen. Yeah, now. Okay. It's now it's come. Let me stop it and start again. Okay. It has come. It has come. Sir, it has okay. come. It has come. It's gone again. <laughs> okay, I will cut back. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think it is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, we have oh, uh, oh. nearly eight million tons of production from uh, about yeah. five million hectares of uh, cultivation, and eighty percent of our cultivation is rainfed, and which is affected mainly the uh, erratic rainfall. So the production and productivity are not stable, and fifty percent of the sir. We see the uh, utility pattern, usage pattern of groundnut. Groundnut has been an oil seed earlier only, but now only nearly 48% to 50% goes for crushing and 28% for export and 15% for confectionery purpose, 10% of course seed. So the share of oil production has come down from oil uh, groundnut just because it has been now preferred as a confectionery product. So when we look at the groundnut situation for last 70 years, we had reached an area of more than 8 million hectares, which has come down and we had come back to the original stage. There it was only for uh, 4 million tons uh, hectares plus. 
but the productivity has increased tremendously and the production also we could sustain so this is the situation and if in the compound annual growth rate also the the area is negative production and productivity there is a positive growth so groundnut has got a lot of advantages i am not going to the details it can be grown in a different seasons and several by products also can be taken from this it is almost uh, adjusted to adverse climatic situation this crop can be grown in adverse conditions as well so before uh, putting into the uh, way ahead i would like to make some uh, projections so that we can uh, work on that the projected gain from enhanced productivity so we are making the uh, assumptions so we assume that 5.3 million hectares as of now and a productivity improvement of 5% per year and 50% will be utilized for oil and we have varieties with the average 60% of shelling we have even 70% shelling varieties also and oil recovery can be uh, 400 kg 400 gram per kg and average oil content we put it as 50 though we have several uh, varieties which has got more than 50% of oil you see sir if we look up to 2050 we can see this growth we can reach up to an yield of 8000 kg so now also there are farmers very progressive farmers who have attained this yield so this is a realizable yield i should say and accordingly the production also will go up but if we see the contribution to the edible oil kitty it is 26.36% it can go up and its contribution to the oil seed production it can go to 43.93% up to so similarly if we give a projection on the area gained expansion of area we expect that increase in area and groundnut may be 1.5% per year cumulatively and improvement in productivity we put it as 3% per year for you and utilization for oil may be 50% average shelling 60% the same thing which i have put earlier so it will go up it can go up to the yield can go up to more than 4500 uh, because we are we have put a very moderate estimate because there are new areas or uh, new areas are coming into and the area can go up to 8.28 in fact it has been our earlier area which we have already reached earlier and come down so it is an attainable area and our production also can with the current year uh, seasons production is expected at uh, say 10 million tons which can go up to 38 million so the projected gain from the area expansion would be like this we can uh, give the uh, get the contribution of the uh, sh uh, share in the oil seed production it can go to up to say 38 more than 38% edible oil share can go up to 23% and oil availability can go up to 4.56% under water deficit stress so the major production constraints in uh, groundnut are water deficit stress that is erratic monsoon as i have already told non availability of quality seeds seeds for new varieties are not available in adequate quantities varieties for special niches like uh, rice fallow potato fallow are not available biotic stresses that is an another production constraint then non availability of quality bio agents several bio agents have been developed by different institutions but those are not being commercialized or not commercially available to the farmers so there is no dearth of varieties it is surprised to know that more than 220 varieties are available in groundnut of which 50 are in seed chain these varieties were mainly bred for a high yield however there are some varieties which has got a drought tolerance short duration and this is resistance as well so if we take the first constraint that is drought and salinity there is an unpredictability as i said more than 80% is cultivated under rain fed condition andhra pradesh which is having the second largest area in india is highly drought poor because the area in anandapur that is the largest district of groundnut grown in the world rather single district it's uh, mainly drought prone and uh, the production productivity is coming down to say for 400 to 700 only so we require more varieties for this uh, situation suitable varieties and we require more improved more better uh, manage, water management technologies and we suggest that at least there should be 20% increase that to, at 
by 2030 in the assured irrigation figure so that the cultivation, the stress levels, for example, uh, mid season and uh, late season stress can be managed by this assured irrigation. And there should be microbial elevation or alleviation of drought and salinity. So there are some other developments which we have, we could identify some uh, calm groundnut that those are variants. These variants could grow better in uh, drought and saline conditions. We have already conducted uh, uh, OFTs and uh, other demonstrations in the target areas of Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, which are giving uh, very promising results. These lines have been tested in uh, saline areas like Kutch and Bhuj, which also have given us uh, very encouraging results. So we have already developed several water management uh, practices, which has already been recommended. I'm not going to the details. So we, the, as we, it has already been pointed out, seed production and seed replacement has been an issue. In groundnut, if we see the leading varieties in breeder sign for these two, three varieties, Kadri 6, Dharani, Kadri 9, most of them are from Andhra Pradesh. So these are the uh, major uh, sh share for this particular uh, breeder seed indent. So if we see the seed production figure, so we are not but we are giving, uh, producing this uh, inden, indented quantity or even uh, more than the intended quantity. What we would suggest is central indents for breeded seed to be rationalized by states. The new varieties to be promoted. More seed hub has to come because already there is a uh, oil seed hub, then more seed hub has to come. And there should be community level seed production, especially through agencies like FPOs. And there should be special training on seed production for farmers so that they can produce and uh, keep their seed. So this is the current area. The maximum area is in, uh, area is in Gujarat. And the only state where the area and production is increasing is Rajasthan. So we, our, if we come to the area expansion figure in the non-traditional areas in the next 10 years, we expect that potato fallows and rice fallows, we can have this much area increased in these states with an expected uh, productivity and enhanced production. Similarly, summer groundnut intercrop sugarcane. This we have tried in UP with our specific intervention, especially at Sidapur district. We could find results for that, and this is becoming encouraging there. Then, long duration planting crops like uh, river birds of uh, Mahanadi, Tungabhadra, etc., Orissa, Karnataka, in some areas of Kerala. We have already put some trials in Kerala somewhere it is promising. So, those areas can be brought into NH region. A 0 0.02 million hectare, so Meghalaya, Tripura, Manipur, Nagaland, and Arunachal Pradesh. We expect a moderate productivity of 2,500. So in the canal area of Rajasthan, we, there also we expect some more area come, can come into groundnut production. For recovering the lost area, as I have said, the groundnut area has gone up to more than 8 million uh, hectares. Now it has come back to 4 million hectares. So we are uh, um, uh, envisaging the recovery of some of the lost area. For example, Sidapur, this, we had a specific intervention I have already told you. So we have revived this cultivation. Now this cultivation is picking up. We have made arrangements for providing quality seeds, seed production, local marketing, etc. We are We have taken up this program in a very extensive way. Then in uh, Southern Maharashtra and Western Maharashtra, some area we can uh, bring back but we require quality seed and subsidized price. Kutch and Bhuj, the area has gone down because of salinity. Now we have got some salinity management practices by using endophytes and our CAM variants. Then some red soil area in South Karnataka. Here we exclusively require mechanization because the profitability of the crop has gone down because of the labor cost. Then availability of quality seeds. That also has been an issue, remunerative pricing. Then Kharif and summer area, which has lost to sugarcane, mainly in uh, Tamil Nadu. So this area can be brought down by uh, providing short duration varieties with fresh seed dormancy, quality seed, etc. Similarly, in Anandapur, short duration Spanish variety with a fresh seed dormancy as record. Now DGR has got a regional station at Anandapur. We have very extensive program on uh, targeting this. So we require additional support for the new niche areas. We should have some custom hiring centers for farm machinery because they're small land holdings. Those farmers may not be able to maintain their machinery. There should be 
setting up of uh, small oil processing units by F, F, uh, farmers producing uh, organizations. Then the infrastructure for seed storage, that also is a major issue, especially where the production areas like uh, Northeast, large scale production and supply of bio agents. That's, I have already told you that uh, this lot of bio agents are being developed, but not reaching the farmers. Then remunerative pricing, this is a policy issue. Some changes are now being coming up. Let us see how this can, uh, uh, these new policies will satisfy this. Then there should be a definite purchase policy. There should be some uh, branding policies. There should be more demonstrations and training. Then there should be facilities for local pr uh, processing with a uh, marketing support. So as I said, we have uh, at DGR, we have four uh, con uh, microbial consortia ready for uh, commercialization. Some, some the MOUs we will be inking by this month last. So, but these, these need commercial productions. Some uh, agencies are coming forward and uh, this it, issue need to be addressed. And we have several other uh, bio agents also, which can be used for uh, different solubilizations of uh, nutrients. These have been tested, validated. This also can be transferred to the users. So now, as I said, uh, now Groundnet has been uh, going to a new set of utility that is uh, food. So he, in this area also we have uh, worked. So we could identify several nutrient rich uh, groundnut varieties. So this we have been advocating to the industry for uh, their uh, special niche products. So this can be, uh, this can go as a branded products. So this can be used by the industries in uh, different ways. This has been transferred to the industries during the in in industry interface day. So we have recently released two uh, high oil groundnut, that is Girnar 4 and Girnar 5, which has got uh, more than 78% uh, of folic acid in it. This is the first, uh, these are the first variety which has been developed by the modern technologies of uh, marker assisted selection. So we have several larger uh, seeded varieties also. This has got a specific market for this also. The several large, large seeded varieties, these are all uh, less than 10 years old. This can go for a specific confectionery need. So then we have already recommended uh, better crop production practices by maintaining adequate plant population, irrigation schedules, planting geometry, water concerning operations, region specific recommendations, nutrient micro and micro nutrient management. Then intercropping. Dr. Radhakrishnan, you have to, Dr. Radhakrishnan, you have to hurry up now. Huh? Yes, yes, sir. I have only two, three slides to go. So intercropping also is being recommended. Different intercropping systems have been recommended for that. And these are the proposed approaches. That is area expansion, expansion and promotion of groundnut in potential new niches, then water saving devices, drip and sprinklers, promotion of biofertilizers, integrated management of soil bone and uh, foliar diseases, post pre and post harvest management, then increasing the profitability part, mechanized farming, then use of biofertilizers, ensure low cost production technologies, improvement in the productivity by doubling of the productivity up to 3600 kg per hectare, then diversification and value addition, promoting groundnut as a healthy food, then contract cultivation. Now I think this will come in place. Then economic use of groundnut shell and other byproducts, which we have commercialized some of the items from this also. Commercial use of groundnut in diversified products. Contract farming for export promotion. So we require this policy push and support for an investment in developing high-end infrastructure facilities for utilizing the modern facilities. Investment in making cost uh, low-cost bio agents in a bio agent hub mode, as we do in. Uh, Seed hub, establishment of centers of excellence, popularization of technologies, aggressively through public-private partnership, farm power machinery on subsidized rate for tillage, sowing, and harvest. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan. Uh, I would now, it was very nice and to listen to your all uh, groundnut situation, and there are a lot of improvements, I think. Uh, I must uh, congratulate you for a very wonderful talk. Now, I call upon Dr. Uh, P.K. Rai, uh, Directorate uh, of uh, Red Seed Mustard Research. Is he around, Dr. Rai? Yeah. He's already with their uh, presentation. Dr. Rai, to please continue. Okay, sir. sir. Am I audible, sir? 
Yeah, you are audible. Uh, you show the full screen now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, uh, chairman of the session, uh, Dr. C. D. Maiza, ex chairman ASRB, and co chairs, <clears throat> chairman Dr. S. K. Sharma, sir, ex vice chancellor, Palampur, and Dr. Rajan Prasad, vice chancellor, University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, chairman, sir, has already uh, highlighted the edible oil uh, situation in the country and the status of the import of edible oil to just meet our uh, uh, annual uh, demand of the edible oil. But uh, I am just uh, presenting here, this is all, uh, you know that uh, this is the situation where uh, our population is expected to grow by 20, next five years to 1.43 billion. And to meet the oil seed, uh, this edible oil requirement, uh, we have to uh, uh, we we will require 13 more than 13 million ton of edible oil against uh, current uh, demand of the 25 million ton and according to one estimate if we continue with the current import of 15 million ton then we require at least 18 million ton edible oil from all domestic sources including primary as well as secondary and as per estimates uh, about 11 oil we will require to enhance our production of seven oil seed crops to four 47 million ton uh, as against of this uh, current uh, <coughs> this uh, production level and coming to this rapid mustard crop uh, if you look at this last five years data then during 2000 percent and if we have to uh, this uh, we continue with this and uh, to achieve this two million ton goal uh, which is otherwise set by the uh, ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare for 2020 21 itself uh, according to this uh, estimate, uh, what they have expected that uh, during 20 and 21, uh, this uh, mustard, rapid mustard production will be uh, 14 million ton on uh, 8 million hectare area. So this is quite possible uh, to achieve this. And uh, this crop uh, actually has uh, certain advantages over other oil seed crops and uh, great possibility exists in this particular uh, group of crop. Uh, to get the to make the India self-sufficient in oil seed <coughs> this uh, production, and uh, why this rapeseed mustard crop is uh, very very important and uh, this can uh, play a vital role because wherever uh, if the cultivation is supported with the suitable uh, technology interventions and knowledge inputs, as it is uh, witnessed uh, from the FLD uh, results, that this crop has good potential uh, production potential. And this uh, crop is capable of uh, to grow in the diverse agroclimatic zone, right from the rain-fed areas to the irrigated one. And this is uh, this uh, crop is uh, very much suited for the uh, soil crop as well as uh, under the mixed cropping system. And this crop is relatively soil tolerant as compared to the other crops in the rabi season. And this uh, crop requires very less input. Cost of production is very very low, and uh, there is high return from this crop. And the water requirement is very low, although uh, wherever the irrigation facility is there, the, the farmers used to give three, four irrigation, but it requires only two irrigation. And if there is a, a scarcity of water, then one, uh, this crop can be harvested. Very good crop can be harvested by giving uh, even one uh, life-saving irrigation. And the fatty acid, uh, this saturated fatty acid content in the uh, this uh, mustard oil is very low. And the seed meal is having very uh, uh, high content of the protein, which is of the good quality. So uh, this, uh, all these characteristics makes this very uh, this crop very very important. And uh, looking to this, this area and uh, this uh, production and yield uh, trend of uh, India during the last five six years, then it appears that from the 2014-15, this productivity is continuously this uh, increasing. And uh, last, this 18-19, we harvested 1.5 ton, 5-1 ton uh, per hectare yield. And this uh, yield can even go up to high because uh, individual farmers under frontline demonstration, they are even harvesting 30 quintal plus, 30 plus uh, yield uh, per hectare. So, uh, 
during the last 10 years, we did this exercise to see whether uh, there is any change in the area production and yield. So we came uh, this that uh, almost production and productivity in the all states, it is increasing one, whereas the area has decreased during the last 10 years at all India level, and it is uh, minus uh, 0.52 percent and there are certain states like UP and Rajasthan. Rajasthan is a major state and since cultivation of uh, rapeseed mustard is largely based on the um, uh, this conjured moisture uh, of the monsoon rains, uh, particularly received during the month of September. So uh, area is always fluctuating but over the last 10 years this area has decreased to 2.4 percent and in UP also this area has decreased uh, to 2.4 uh, six nine percent as well as production this is the only state where production has also decreased during the last 10 years and uh, similar is the case with the gujarat where uh, area has decreased by 2.72 percent and uh, coming to the uh, role of icrd rmr uh, this is the <coughs> repository of germ plan and we are having two thousand more than 2500 germ plan preserved and we are sharing this to all these stakeholders particularly all india coordinating centers for the development of uh, varieties which is required for different agroclimatic zones and for different conditions. And uh, this is uh, in nutshell, uh, I had compiled this, uh, uh, the achievements uh, made by the ICRD RMR and uh, India Coordinated Research Project. In total, we have developed more than 300 uh, production protection technology, including varieties, which is 193 varieties and four hybrids have been developed. And the, uh, as far as uh, this uh, role of icr DRM is concerned, we have developed uh, 10 varieties of uh, rapsin mustard and uh, 17 production and protection technology, including the water use efficiency, nutrient use efficiency, and cropping system. Because uh, rapsin mustard is largely grown in Rajasthan, and there is a, the area, vast area, where farmers are growing single crop in a year. So for those farmers we have we have the, we have developed the this uh, given the cropping system uh, like moong maize and maize mustard moong mustard like and cluster bean mustard and these uh, cropping uh, systems uh, farmers are adopting and getting uh, very good uh, uh, return from that and uh, in total 157 germ plot this uh, germ plot uh, which is specific for specific traits were identified and as such, uh, ICRD RMR has registered uh, 20 germ plot, 30 specific germ plot. And we produce two video film, uh, which is very much uh, popular, and we have put on the website also. The farmers can see and uh, can see whether, how they can go for the scientific cultivation of mustard. And we have developed also the web based uh, system for, for opening systems and and for, uh, for using this by using these uh, this web based system. The varietal identification uh, based on the situation can be done, and farmers can also uh, go for the uh, fertilizer use uh, based on their uh, health card, uh, soil health card. And then uh, we have also developed the audio CDs and uh, with this uh, mobile apps. And uh, these are the some varieties which have been developed, uh, 10 varieties which have been developed by the DRMR and 20 z plus and register. By using the journal plan, we have developed uh, under the All India Coordinator Research Project more than 300, uh, this uh, 100, 197 varieties. And these varieties are very, very specific to the different states and uh, about 30 varieties for Rajasthan, 26 and 22 varieties for Punjab. In general, I would like to mention that uh, this year we have uh, the indent, breeders in indent for more 64 varieties. So, and apart from this is 64 varieties are from the public sector besides the uh, varieties and hybrids available from the private sectors. And there are certain uh, uh, varieties which are very, very trade specific. And uh, this has been developed by the public sector. And this high temperature is a major problem which has been encountered during the last 10, 15 years. And if you look at this, then uh, we find that at least 10 to 15 days uh, growing season had decreased because at the time of sowing temperature is quite high and at the time of harvesting also temperature rises. And for that, we have 12 uh, varieties as of now and late sown condition, particularly in the rice fellow area where the, the rice, uh, the sowing is quite late. And for that reason, we have the varieties, six varieties and uh, there are certain areas in the central India and this uh, Revadi, some part of the Haryana where uh, drought is a problem for that also we have the varieties. And uh, 
although the rapsid mustard is being considered as the irrigated crop but uh, there is large area where the uh, cultivation is done in the under rainfed conditions and for these conditions also we have the varieties and uh, major tract uh, of the this uh, western up and some part of the haryana and uh, rajasthan this the uh, salinity is a big problem and for that also we have the varieties and for quality mustard we have uh, low erosic acid and double low varieties and under non traditional area particularly in southern regions uh, we have this these varieties uh, nrc hb 101 pm 28 and gujarat master 2 and pm 25 they are going doing very well and uh, coming to this uh, is this slide i have kept the purposely because uh, we when we are talking about the self sufficiency in that will i so let us see that uh, by present level uh, this uh, um, uh, technology which is available either varieties or production and production technologies we can easily increase our uh, production up to 10 more than 10 million ton uh with the existing technology provided we have to uh, focus on certain issues and how to harness this uh, untapped potential of existing technology and for that reason uh up scaling of uh, seed replacement rate and varietal replacement rate although ndsc has given the guideline that uh, not more than 10 years old variety will be used for the product in this uh, crop and not only in this crop but in other crops also so varietal replacement rate is uh, very high now and the seed replacement rate uh, which is a very low value crop it is actually uh, this uh, seed as far as seed is concerned very small amount of seed is required uh, but then uh, only 65% if you calculate at all india 65% seed replacement rate is there uh, which needs to be enhanced further and uh, availability of breeder seed and certified seed of new varieties is to be made uh, available at the local level and for that uh, two years back in during 1718 uh, total 30 il seed hubs uh, out of that eight seed hubs were given to the uh, red seed mustard and we established this seed hubs in different states and farmers are getting the certified seed of the improved varieties at local levels but here some uh, four seed hubs need to be established networking with the state uh, deployment personnel ngo and processing industry it is very essentially required and the directorate is doing this and we have established a network with the state uh, agriculture departments atma and state agriculture universities and many ngos and we have linked uh, this uh, drmr to self help groups and fpos ngos for giving them advisory services farmer uh, participatory technology generation and assessment is required because in spite of uh, this much intent actually we are receiving every year more than 80 to 100 quintals 80 to 100 quintal breeder seed intent whereas only 7 to 8 quintal breeder seed is required to for the sowing of entire country so there is a big mismatch and uh, above all the farmers are even getting the <laughs> seeds market is full of these spurious seeds and farmers uh, are compelled to buy these so uh, there is need uh, to go for the farmer participatory uh, particularly the seed development program and uh, the directorate is doing continuous efforts and whatever seed we are selling from uh, drmr more than 50% uh, seeds we are producing from the participatory mode from the farmers and documentation of itk there are certain technologies which farmers are following and getting good yield and uh, this need to be uh, validated and then development of model rapid master <coughs> production villages uh, in fact 5 6 years back one uh, uh, this uh, dsc has launched one program and we are in the vicinity of drmr we developed one uh, master uh, village and this need to be replicated at many places crop ecological zoning because uh, this is uh, crop is grown in almost 17 states and the zone which uh, we have at present it is six six zones and we have initiated the process for this ecological zoning to evolve large number of varieties which are most suited in the small uh, these zones and that will uh, also facilitate the uh, to enhance the production and productivity of the mustard crop Dr. rai yeah, yeah. the time is very constrained timely yeah just just one uh, these are the constraint because uh, this constraint we are facing uh, this crop is facing since long back and uh, this is also uh, at present because uh, uh, certainty this acreage is uncertain because large number of area is in rajasthan and this is always dependent upon the uh, receding rainfall 
uh, monsoon rainfall and uh, there are certain with the climatic change certain diseases are emerging say for example during the last 10 years scrotonia uh, stem rot has emerged as a major uh, <coughs> disease and this need to be addressed and then uh, cobra banki is also a problem in certain areas and large cultivation under the resource constraint conditions farmers are doing this and uh, uh, ground water quality is very poor in major growing tracts and, <coughs> and then ins insufficient networking is there within, within the this among the various mm -hmm. stakeholders and these are the third, th some thirst area where we need to work and uh, this uh, includes the densit resource management for effective management of nil pool and for that directorate is working and we are improving the uh, yield and quality of the uh, oil as well as the seed meal and natural resource management in that uh, water this soil water and nutrient management we have advocated and uh, we are doing this uh, from the all india coordinated uh, research uh, programs and uh, we are very effectively managing the these important diseases and insect pests and uh, we are changing our uh, this uh, ipm modules as per the uh, requirement of the local uh, as per local requirement and then uh, these are the district 585 485 district which has been categorized under the different category having the low area medium area and high area and low uh, yield uh, medium yield and high yield and we are putting the front line demonstration particularly in these areas where area is very high and the productivity is very low so that this uh, improved production and production technologies can be demonstrated to the farmers at the field level and uh, coming to the uh, limited uh, this approach for the next five years there are certain targeted approach which requires to be addressed that is seedling stage heat tolerant varieties which is a problem in the central <coughs> central india and uh, particularly in eastern and northeastern area area where uh, mustard is been taken on the rice fellow early maturing and heat tolerant varieties and uh, which is uh, uh, late sown variety conditions this is required and development of nutrient issue efficiency particularly the sulfur acquisition because wherever we are educating the uh, use of sulfur because single super phosphate in many states is not available so wherever farmers are using dap we are all, always educating them to use the sulfur uh, for enhancing the mustard production and all oil, oil content also and uh, varieties a large number of area in eastern up and then bihar and jharkhand this is uh, uh, mustard is taken as intercrop. So varieties uh, we are identifying and we have identified also the varieties which are very much suited for the intercropping system. And as for the requirement of uh, this uh, climate change requirement, IPM uh, module we are refining and uh, then uh, integrated crop management uh, to ensure the increased water productivity. And uh, I, I have already discussed the increased availability of quality seed and better, uh, varietal replacement rate and seed replacement rate. Here, some more seed hubs uh, will do excellent in this. Uh, then, micro irrigation and farm mechanization and horizontal expansion uh, directed from since last eight, 10 years. We are uh, continuously trying to expand this rapid mustard cultivation in eastern and northeastern areas. And recently, we uh, signed one MAU to give the consultancy services to Assam government under the World Bank funded project apart and uh, promotion of mini ax fellas because in those areas uh, farmers are uh, they, they are not very confident actually to uh, go for the scientific cultiva cultivation and last year we have uh, installed uh, nine seed mini oil mustard oil fellas at different places in arunachal pradesh manipur assam jharkhand and the results are very very encouraging and, and the farmers of those areas they are encouraged to go for the scientific cultivation and uh, another problem in those areas is the this storage structures, which is lacking, and there is need to create these storage structures and promotion of rapid mustard. Because government of India and we also uh, is aggressively promoting this mustard based uh, beekeeping in those areas in Rajasthan, Haryana. Farmers they are all uh, following this, but in eastern and northeastern area we are uh, is promoting this. Uh, uh, mustard waste beekeeping so that the farmers could get some uh, extra farm incomes. So these are the uh, different uh, issues and that uh, directorate is doing on this uh, uh, to address the problems of the farmers. So this was all about this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rai. I think uh, you have covered uh, very extensively about mustard. What are the programs going on? 
So I am sure that uh, there is a lot of hope uh, for mustard and increasing productivity. Now may I call upon the next speaker, uh, Dr. R. K. Mathur. Sir, R. K. Mathur is here. Sir, Dr. Yeah. R. K. Mathur is not there, sir. I am presenting on his behalf, Dr. Suresh. Okay, what do you think? Suresh. May I call upon Suresh to make a presentation? Suresh, you have to be a little brief. We are yeah, already sir. running out of time. Yeah, yes, yeah. I only yes. take 15 minutes, okay? Sure, sir. Because sure, sir. We will not have time to have discussion. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, Dr. Suresh. Yeah, yeah, yes. Please go ahead. Sir, respected chairman, Dr. C. D. Mahesab, uh, then co-chairman, Dr. S. K. Sharma, Dr. S. Rajendra Prasad, directors of uh, all oil seed institutes, and my dear colleagues. So today I am here in, on behalf of my director to present the increasing productivity and profitability for self-sufficiency in oil seed production. In that, particularly, what is the role of oil palm? So coming to the need for promotion of oil palm in the country, India is not self-sufficient in edible oils. As, you, as, a, as our chairman was telling, a lot of uh, imports are being done to the tune of 60% uh, of the total requirement is being required. And in that, palm oil accounts for nearly 40,000 crores. So the present area is roughly around 3.5 lakh hectares, but it can go up to 28 lakh hectares as per the latest report submitted by DAC, ICR, IOPR. So, and agroclimatic regions of northeastern region and parts of India are highly conducive for oil palm cultivation and a mission mode is required to increase the area production and productivity. And so, so that you know, all these factors can lead to Atma Nirbhar Bharat, so that the inputs will be directly used for the farmers. So coming to the, in continuation of that, it, we have submitted a latest report of 27 lakh hectare, which is identified as potential. Till date, only 13% has been converted as a cultivated area. And also, oil palm produces 10 to 16 times more oil per hectare than other oil seed crops, as it is having a, a yield of nearly 6 to 8 tons per hectare. And being a perennial crop, the labor requirement is very less compared to other annual crops. And also it has a potential to create jobs in mill, processing, harvesting, road construction, particularly in NER region. Also being an eco-friendly crop, it produces a lot of dry matter, which is a source of recycling of nutrients so that the fertilizers can be reduced to the tune of 50 to 75%. And lastly, it has a lot of scope for growing intercrops. So the constraints which has been faced till now is at present an area of 3.2 lakh hectares are there and out of this the mature area is only 1.75. The other areas are all juvenile, juvenile areas. The productivity is 6 to 8 tons. However, the national average oil yield is very less which I will be showing subsequently. The industry, dependent, the industry is dependent on cheaper imported palm oil and the farmers are unable to get remunerative prices due to high cost of production. And the, in northeastern region, the terrain is a big problem, which is avoiding hampering transportation and then loss of habit. And also the wild and stray animals are there. The gestation period in a particularly being a perennial crop, it is nearly three to four years. That is why a significant upfront investment is required for the farmers. And the processors are expected to commit without a firm view on oil farm, price or FFB price. So this is a this is the present status. So if you take Andhra Pradesh is leading in the uh, cultivation that is 1,75,000 as of now, uh, followed by Karnataka and Odisha. Coming to the NER region, Mizoram is leading by 28,000 hectares, followed by Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh. And this is, this is the slide which I wanted to show you, that is there is a huge gap in the FFP yield in different states. Like in Andhra Pradesh, it is ranging from 35 five tons of FFP to 30 tons. In Karnataka, 0.5 to 50. Tamil Nadu, like that now. And we have seen, we have identified what are the main issues. These issues are mainly due to management and lack of irrigation facilities. So coming up some of the technologies, by IOPR, which is having a high impact in the field, is the supply of indigenous material. 
So we have developed the technology for production of oil palm hybrid seed production, and till date we have supplied nearly 250 lakh sprouts, which is coming to the area of 1 lakh 25 thousand, and we have saved nearly 12,500 lakh of foreign exchange. And now at present, no, we are having five more seed gardens, which has a capacity of producing 30 lakh per year. And coming coming to the development of hybrids. We have developed three hybrids. That is Godavari Swarna, Godavari Ratna, and Godavari Gold. So, and these varieties are at different stages of SVRC and CVRC. And there, no, the third generation hybrids, which is having a targeted yield of seven to eight tons, have been developed, and it has been supplied to the farmers. Coming to the suitability of different intercrops. So, different intercrops can be grown in the oil palm. Like cocoa, red ginger, heliconia, bush pepper, banana, and many other oil ornamental crops, and the cost-benefit ratio is also very high. Coming to the resource, better use of resources efficiency, we have standardized the fertigation technique, whereby we can the 30% increase in the FFB yield, and there is a saving of 52% of the fertilizers. We have developed mobile apps so that the water requirement schedules can be. Made for the states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. Coming to the IPM strategies, so in the last two years we have developed the IPM technologies for the control of leaf webworm, and presently we have developed the technology for rubus spiraling whitefly also. And coming to the doubling of farm income, we have developed a few technologies, and this is being transferred to the villages also, so that you now the end user should know whether the double doubling of the income is occurring or not. Like micro irrigation, fertigation, intercrops, mixed farming system, mechanization of harvesting, and nutrient recycling of the wastes. And coming to the, we are handholding the government of India DAC also DAC FW in doing the feasibility studies for oil palm cultivation. Like we have prepared reports 2006, 12, 20, and then we have done feasibility studies in Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, Assam, and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Coming to the capacity building programs, we have done till now. We have given nearly three thousand officers and thirty-five thousand farmers have been trained on various aspects of oil palm cultivation. And these are some of the capacity building programs like the diagnostic field visits interface and apps have been developed. And these are this is a nutshell of all the capacity building programs which is being exclusively done at NER, that is the national, um, the northeast region. And recently, what recently we have submitted a reassessment report, uh, which is uh, being in done with collaboration with the DAC FW. And here we have prepared the roadmap for the oil palm promotion policy. So there now we have assessed the potential area based on remote sensing and then the GIS applications with the help of MNCFC and NBSS LUP. There, 28 lakh hectares have been identified as potential areas. Micro level survey can be done through site suitability mobile app. The constraints in area expansion and low productivity by stakeholders have been collected from different states, and general and state-specific strategies have been made. Also, a special um, exclusively for NER also strategies have been made. And here, uh, this crop is having a peculiar problem. We have to closely involve with the developmental aspects. So the research is being done by ICR IOPR, and the, here. The, all the stakeholders, like DAC FW, the state governments of the 18 oil palm growing states, the 25 entrepreneurs, the mill, and the oil palm growers of 35 point like are closely linked. And coming to the suggested plan action for the oil palm uh, promotion, so here one constraint is now we have to go for area expansion. That is that area expansion is still 3.21, so we have to increase the area. Assessment through enhanced support of planting material, gestation period the, during the gestation period, and micro irrigation system. And the plantation should be done. The second point is the cluster plantation. It should be in clusters so that you no know, the area if it is scattered, the operations will be difficult. The planting material requirement has to be enhanced. The productivity has to be increased through fertigation and micro irrigation. The genetic and improvement should be done for high yield and waftness. The processing mills. Has to be enhanced. The price, of, the uniform price, should be there, and the, the, to avoid fluctuations in the domestic price, 
MSP and MIS should be implemented. Oil Palm Act should be enacted in all the states. The import duty should be always more than 50%. At present, it is 45%. It is safe. So it should be always more than 50%. The weather-based insurance should be given so that you no know, vagaries of different vagaries, the farmer should be supported. Harvesters group has to be formed so that you no know, there should be uh, enhanced harvesting. Monitoring, it should be declared as a plantation crops so that it can be rigorously done. And the allocation of the amount should be more. And imposition of cess, 0.5% cess on the imported CPU has to be done so that you know, it can be used as a price stabilization fund. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, for a very comprehensive presentation on the oil palm. Now we have a last presentation of the director that is from Indore, the host institution who is conducting this. Uh, may I call upon Dr. Nina Kandekar to kindly yes. make a presentation for 15 minutes so that we can go. I think uh, the last presentation would be now uh, the from Dr. R.K. Arora. Okay. Has he come, Dr. Arora? Uh, I have to find out, sir. Yeah, I just, please. Just find out, okay, Dr. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone once again. Uh, I'll li limit my presentation to the research that needs to be done, that has been done, and uh, what is the future needs. So uh, my talk will be on soybean research, past, present, and future. So everybody knows that the situation of soybean is not too good. And uh, we, the production, the area, the productivity has been more or less stagnant. And uh, we are limited to MP, Maharashtra, and Rajasthan. And now it's expanding to Telangana, Karnataka, Gujarat. It has been there. Also in Punjab, there's a possibility Bihar, Orissa, Northeast. We have a question mark. We are looking into these areas in future. And for that, we need research uh, specific to that area to see whether we have varieties or the production technology which hold good in those areas. Uh, as we know, only in the 2012, we had the maximum uh, production, which is it was around 14.67. And there onward, it has just been a progressive decline. And the potential of uh, soya bean is around five tons per hectare, which is taken around in Maharashtra area, around Pune. So uh, I feel that in terms of yield, there's not much uh, challenge that we have out here, but there are other issues which are really challenging to us. There has been a marginal improvement post uh, 2015 in the uh, production and productivity. And this year, the area has increased by 8.23 because uh, it was expected to be a good monsoon year. As we all know, it's a rain-fed uh, crop so the whatever past endeavors we've had, they have culminated into, uh, we have around uh, 5,000 plus germ plasma accessions, which are basically in these characters, like we have photosensitivity, longevity, null KTI. Then we have a germ plasma panel also, which is elixir source for photo insensitivity, oleic acid, pot shattering. So we have all this for developing our varieties. And we've also registered some uh, 11 lines. <clears throat> with regard to variety, we have so far come up with 124 varieties under soya bean, including the ecrips, which have uh, all these uh, traits. But the problem is the farmers want a short duration variety and our varieties are somewhere around 100 days or 110 days, which the farmer is not uh, willing to uh, shift to. Uh, this is a challenge that we are facing. Now, we also have uh, developed pr advanced production technology, which include all the good agronomical practices, which include the amount of seed rate, the row spacing, the water requirement, weed, uh, the soil types, everything. We have also, in fact, standardized a package of practice for organic soybean production. Now, the challenge out here is uh, the 
technology transfer, which I'm not going to speak here because that will be spoken in the relevant session and I can pose some questions or say what we have done out here. So I'm just limiting to research out here. We also have technologies which uh, are, you know, uh, yeah. will reduce the amount of fertilizer requirement uh, using uh, microbial consortium or some kind of uh, microriser. And uh, we've, we've uh, done quite advanced research in this area too. Now, they are, uh, we've done in the research sector, we've done some impact studies on some aspect. We've done on uh, rust, we've done on uh, use of machinery, and there's other areas that we need to work on in uh, as uh, far as the dissemination of technology and the impact studies goes. Uh, we in uh, computer application also, we have uh, some forewarning models. Uh, we have some mapping of the hotspot area, which can be recommended. So we've standardized these uh, technologies uh, through our uh, research in computer application. Uh, our computer scientist also has developed a mobile app, which can be used uh, by the uh, farmers. And uh, now uh, we they, she's also developing an AI uh, uh, technology which can be used for uh, you know assessing what exactly is the requirement of a particular area so those kind of re research initiatives are already underway so we've developed and commercialized a lot of machineries also which need to be again disseminated we it's being disseminated but uh, we need much more far uh, fetch, use for it so we have uh, commercialized uh, technologies. We have uh, around uh, seven varieties, which have specialty soybean, which have been commercialized. We have microbial technology that has been commercialized. We have agriculture machineries. We have copyrights of some of our uh, computer application uh, programs. Now, the current initiatives that we are taking right now is uh, we are developing genotypes. Now there's antigenosis, antibiases for uh, seeking resistance and tolerance to insects, uh, especially the defoliators, stem fly and girdle beetle. So we're concentrating on this. Uh, we are also conducting artificial screening on the resistance to disease, uh, the major diseases, even YMV is there. Uh, we are also conducting uh, research in the hotspot areas on diseases. There's phenotyping uh, also is being done now. And we have the, some of the pictures like how we are doing in the drought and water logging, which is a major problem uh, currently. So uh, we're concentrating in this uh, to develop varieties which would be uh, stress tolerant, including uh, both water, drought, as well as high temperature. Uh, with uh, We have gene, gene QTL mapping we are doing using um, biparental approach. So for this is for abiotic stress, for biotic stress, and for other traits which are important in uh, for um, soybean consumption, even for uh, as a vegetable, uh, or, and even the, the use of uh, soybean as a food. So we need to have these uh, important things, uh, uh, the null KTI, the null locks, a uh, comprehensive kind of uh, variety that which has all these kind of traits. That is the need of the R. Even oleic acid, the more the uh, oleic acid content, the rancidity problem will be uh, solved if we have uh, varieties which have uh, these kind of characters. Uh, we are also doing marker genome assisted breeding and um, GWAS and genomic tools for drought and uh, water tolerance is being done. And now we have we are now concentrating on resource conservation technology because agronomical trials they are being continued but uh, now the concentration is on uh, con resource conservation technologies where we are trying to uh, have uh, the uh, under the residue situation only we are uh, kind of uh, sowing this soya bean and the and the next crop the uh, wheat is sown in the soya residue. So this is one of the important aspects that we are taking up, which is very important and which will reduce the burning of the residue. Now, the other areas that we are working on is agronomic uh, biofortification of micronutrients. Now, so there are strategies to enhance the yield of soya bean using climate variability information. And uh, we are also trying to work out the long-term manage, uh, agriculture management practices and on lipid profiling uh, using the uh, signature biomarker fatty acids. Now, nutrient spray techniques uh, for drought 
uh, evaluation is also being standardized out here. Then there's a field evaluation of the potential plant growth promoting rhizobacteria and AM fungi. We are working on that also. We're also trying to develop and evaluate some ICT tools and digital media for transfer of technology in soybean. And most importantly, we, are, we have to do some impact evaluation and innovative models uh, we need to develop, which is also being uh, initiated out here. Now the challenges as far as uh, developing uh, a roadmap goes. So the challenge that we face is one is our gene pool. We have absence of secondary gene pool because uh, we have a very narrow gene base and soja is the only uh, the main uh, variety that we are using here. Uh, then secondly, uh, everybody realizes that uh, soya bean is a temperate crop which has been, it is a long duration crop, which has been adapted to our climatic conditions. And uh, we, again, in India, we need a variety which is of shorter duration. So the season like there in abroad, it is a full season crop of 140 to 160 days. Now we have adapted it to around 90 to 110 days. So the challenges in soya bean are way, way more than any of the, whether it's groundnut or mustard or other crops we are facing. Uh, every day is a challenge because today also it's raining. It's now going to be, uh, you know, end of September, approaching October and it's still raining. Um, the duration, farmers prefer short duration and which is more prone to biotic and abiotic stresses. So uh, this is a major handicap. We have varieties, but they are not short duration varieties. So this is a major challenge for the scientists where we need to come up with some kind of uh, you know, solution for this. Now diseases, because there's a lack of host pathogen interaction information, we have lack of artificial screening techniques. We are doing now uh, because we have scientists which have uh, who have uh, joined recently and uh, the department has been strengthened. Although uh, Dr. Ian Sharma, who was a pioneer in uh, the entomology, he is uh, retired, but still we have now some new yeah, scientists. Is successful, and, uh, successful. Uh, somebody and speaking in the background, can we mute them? And major, uh, major, uh, major challenge is the climate variability. Every day is a new problem. Every day there's a new challenge. And uh, I like to just uh, show something that here we have problems related to seed. There's field weathering, there's mechanical damage, there's seed longevity and the pre harvest This is one of the newest because of the uh, late monsoons or uh, the continued rain, not late monsoons, continued rains uh, during the month of September late August, the short duration variety have this kind of problem. There is a sprouting. And last year also, the farmers faced this problem. And this year also, again, we, this is a farmer's, uh, from the farmer's field, we have taken this photograph. And uh, these are the kind of problems where we need to work on and have research. Uh, speed breeding is one of the areas that we are looking into. Uh, we are also trying to develop some pheromones and chiromones uh, collaboratively with IAHR. This is a new area that we have, uh, we are going to take. Uh, AI uh, also is uh, for uh, farmers use is one of the important artificial uh, technology uh, information. It's very, very important. And uh, that is also, we have floated a project for external so, uh, funding. So if that comes and we'll be, because it is a very uh, capital intensive kind of a project. So uh, unless funds flow in for research in uh, these areas, uh, we will not be really able to deliver as much as we have the capability, we have the uh, technologies, we have the manpower now, but now what we need is to develop facilities. So they, uh, like, sir, you said, talked about GM, uh, in uh, for uh, weedicide and herbicide uh, resistant uh, varieties. I feel that if we have GM for uh, disease resistance and multi-trade disease resistance, that would really be very, very helpful uh, for the farmers. And uh, because uh, what happens that farmers here, uh, they don't really spray. So even the herbicide resistant variety, we will need to spray. So I don't know how we, we need research on GM, that is true. We need to be ready for the future. That is also true. And uh, how to go about it, where uh, the funding will come from, how it will be funded is another question where we are ready for the farmers. 
and uh, that is all i have to say because i'm only going to concentrate on the research issues uh, related to soya bean thank you neeta very nicely presenting the brief uh, now i would like to call upon uh, the last lecture which was a special lecture on the constraint and strategies for uh, enhancing mustard productivity by one ceo of tera iim that is rk arora uh, hope arora has come yeah and uh, uh, yeah please dr dr don dr respective dr cd mai dr sharma and uh, dr pk rai dr neeta and other dignitaries i am rakesh arora representing uh, tra agrotech private limited i am uh, looking after mustard and pearl millet uh, research based out of gurgaon so may i have my uh, presentation also can yeah please share the screen please share the screen please share the screen yourself yeah that's what i am trying to do from here Oh, you have supplied already to the. Uh -huh. I have already given the presentation. I will just take it. Yeah. Out. So, Nita, it can be done from your end then. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. just take it out, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, good. yeah. I'll tell you that we are getting more and more complex. We are getting more and more complex. Our relationships are getting complex. So that's why we are getting the relationship. Hello. And the relationship is probably at the most high. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Right? No. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fine. Uh, yes yes you can go ahead dr arora yeah once again i would like to first uh, thank uh, organizers as well as uh, dr pk rai for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences about the constraints of uh, mustard crop actually so in fact uh, dr pk rai has elaborated discussed about uh, uh, constraints also still i will go ahead with uh, certain uh, certain my experiences so in this uh, slide actually dr rai has already mentioned that for the last 5 years mustard has experienced 8 to 9% compound growth rate but we need to know what happened during the last 5 years in my in my view actually during these last years adoption of the improved varieties adoption of the hetero, uh, 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 hybrids developed by the private companies alongside a little bit of uh, lower pressure of the major fungal disease alternate alternaria blight have was experienced during the last 5 years so these are my uh, comments for this slide actually coming to the next slide yeah i have also tried to distribute this uh, area into various species of uh, rape seed and mustard as we know that brassica gentia mustard is the major species amongst the rape seed and mustard crop and occupies about 85% of the total area and 15% of the area is occupied by brassica campestris variety toria yellow sarso iruca stiva and brassica nepus also up to some extent in punjab conditions with this slide uh, in this slide i would like to uh, convey that if we exclude these 15% share of these uh, uh, rape seed uh, species then productivity of brassica gentia would we, will be much more higher actually it would be around 1700 to 1800 kgs per hectare as on today so we have to think of uh, uh, increasing the productivity of these varieties or we need to think of phasing out like uh, early maturity toria variety as well as iruca stiva their productivity is may be around 8 to 9 quintal per hectare so we need to replace them with suitable early or extra early and water resilient mustard varieties so that straight away from that maybe 8 to 10% area 
could deliver maybe around 15 to 20 percent higher in uh, higher uh, productivity uh, as compared to these low yielding uh, uh, species now the scenario has already been uh, discussed actually uh, uh, last year productivity of 1501 was experienced and average contribution of oil production by rapeseed mustard is around uh, 26 to 29 percent and i have already discussed about this uh, uh, scenario in last 10 years productivity has increased from 1.1 million ton to 1.5 million ton per hectare so now yield gap of 40 percent has been experienced or reported between the potential uh, between the potential and a realizable yield as reported by the fld's uh, conducted during the uh, last several years across India. But when we compare the actual yield gap, which is actually 55% between the national average yield as well as the actual potential of a particular variety or hybrid, which needs to be plugged in in a different ways. And that is the reason lots of constraints are there. We need to plug those constraints. Now, I have uh, uh, classified these constraints uh, uh, as usual into biotic factors as well as uh, abi abiotic factors. Among us, the diseases, sclerotinia has emerged out to be one of the most devastating uh, disease during the last seven to eight years. It can, uh, it can, uh, 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 da uh, damage the crop to the extent of 40% uh, uh, to 60% yield losses also can be experienced. But I have mentioned the average percent yield, keeping in view how much area within the India and uh, is affected by that particular disease. So average yield losses by sclerotinia are 10%. As I mentioned earlier also, alternaria blight is not... Uh, uh, coming nowadays, so its average uh, yield loss is around 3%. However, 47% has been uh, experienced. And this uh, results into the reduced oil content also. Oil quality and oil content is also uh, reduced by this disease. Similarly, powdery mildew, which comes uh, under at the uh, late sown conditions uh, crop and when the temperature is very high. All the mildew also gives uh, losses of uh, two to minimum or, uh, average loss of two percent, and uh, highest loss of eighteen percent has been reported. But coupled with the reduced oil content, also sir. Among us, the uh, insects, we know all of us know that aphids are most important actually. But most of the farmers go for the chemical control of the aphid, but that is the reason average losses are low. And painted buggy, buggy is also there, which also results into the uh, reduced oil content. Now, coming to the weeds, actually, I put weeds as a number one bio, uh, one number one biotic stress or constraint for mustard crop because I my experience is that maybe eighty, maybe ninety percent of farmers don't resort to the hand weeding actually, and neither we don't have any effective weedy side nowadays. So I put it as a very uh, alarming situation for rapeseed and mustard crop. And it, uh, as per the reports, it can cause to the maximum losses of 37%. Then another most important emerging uh, or not emerging since quite long for the last 10, 15 years, orobanki, that is parasitic weed of mustard, which robs the yield to the extent of 10% on an average and 49% has been maximum reported, but I have seen the fields in uh, Western Rajasthan or in Seeker area where the crop has been completely stopped. Farmers have completely stopped growing mustard at all because they have experienced maybe more than 70, 80% yield losses. And I guess maybe around near to 1 million hectare has been uh, one way or other way uh, uh, has been affected by the orobanki and resulted into the very reduced productivity of mustard crop in India. 
which needs a lot of attention actually. Among us, the abiotic stresses, frost was and is. Dr. Arora. Yes, sir. Dr. Arora, these have been already told by Dr. Rai. Sure, sir. Sure. I would say yes. that what are the, you can go to strategies. Okay, I sir. think that I'm, is I'm, more important now. Okay. In this, I will just point out only one thing. In the northeastern region, yeah. Urisa, West Bengal, where rice fellows are there, our soils are acidic. So acidic soils are very conducive for the club root disease, which can be ameliorated by using the dolomite or sulfur, which government can in incentivize for that reason, and productivity can be increased. Coming to my next strategies, actually, as I already mentioned, sclerotinia needs a lot of attention, actually. Sources are available. Projects are being taken up by Punjab Agriculture University, by Haryana Agriculture University, but we still don't have any good source or any cultivar with sclerotinia resistance, which needs more investment in research and farmer is waiting for having some good varieties for that. At the same time, we have very good sources for the white rust. But again, I'm sorry to say, we don't have any commercial varieties, which is widely adapted having a white rust resistance. So we are working on that actually. Now I have come to know lots of uh, institutes are coming up, uh, coming out with white rust uh, resistant varieties also. DRMR itself has done a lot of uh, uh, research on white rust. We need to commercialize these traits actually. Similarly for the alternate area of life. And as uh, Dr. Nita has already told about the need of the uh, developing GMOs for insect tolerance. We really need GMOs. And hybrid has already, private companies have developed hybrids, government institutions have already uh, developed the hybrids and they have exhibited for the last 10 years, they have exhibited 10 to 12% yield gain over the commercial public varieties actually. So it offers hybrid technology, offers a lot of uh, scope for improving the productivity as well as production of mustard in India. And hybrid program can be extended to uh, another self-pollinated variety like yellow sarsum also, which should be harnessed actually. So another factors we already have uh, 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 development of climate smart Varieties are in progress. Dr. Roy has also did. Now, coming to the development of canola quality, it, it really has a lot of promise for our country. If you look into the end, varieties have also been released by uh, IRI also. PM31 and PM30. PM31 is double zero variety. But these varieties are low yielding, which farmer does not want to, I would say, is not uh, willing to adopt them because they doesn't they don't get that much economic values for these valuable traits should be delivered to the farmers with high yield actually and which is very possible and these uh, traits should be combined with the uh, delivered with the hybrids with high productivity that's my submission actually then as on today the ruling varieties are actually 38% to 42%. Very few varieties or hybrids are with 42%, but majority of them are with 38 to 39%. So we need to put a threshold actually when we are releasing the varieties that we would not be releasing a variety which is less than 41% or 42%. So we need to focus on this. We have lots of resources for high oil content. So that's my suggestion actually in that regard. And for herbicide tolerance, we have clear field technology tested in one of my previous companies for which I will be deliberating in my last uh, slide also, which holds a lot of promise for controlling weeds as well as orobank. Again, I'm uh, proposing here need to replace low yielding species, namely Brassica campestris and uh, Iruka stiva with uh, 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 high yielding, early and extra early, 
ब्रेसिक एजेंसिया वराइटीज सो क्रिस्पर कैस नाइनटीन नाइन इफ इफ अप्रूव्ड इन इंडिया कैन प्ले ए वाइटल रोल टू डेवलप पेस्ट टॉलरेंस एंड डिजीज टॉलरेंट वराइटीज और हाइब्रिड इन फ्यूचर now regarding the clear field technology i would like to go for some specificity this is non gmo technology developed by bsf for mustard brassica agencia two mutations namely pm1 pm3 confer resistance in brassica agencia against the herbicide belonging to the imidazolinone chemical developed again developed by the bsf these genes are co dominant and act in additive manner and hence both the genes in dominant homozygous conditions should be present in the varieties or should be present in both the parents of a hybrid to get the full efficacy of uh, this chemical against the uh, the herbicide is applied at 20 days after sowing and kills most of the broad as well as narrow leaf weeds alongside the orobanki to the extent of 95% label claim of this chemical in india would be given by 2021 this is being successfully deployed by some of our mustard hybrids by one mnc company corteva where i worked for 30 and 1/2 years and on the left side the pictures are before you the resistant we didn't see any plant injury also on that and the middle four Uh, rows were of susceptible mustard variety which have been killed by imidazolinone chemicals and you can see there is no no weeds or orobanki present also we had another uh, entries also like uh, controls were also there we elaborately did this efficacy trial and found it very very effective for our country so i propose that i'll go to the summary now so in to summarize i would say develop high yielding commercial varieties oblique hybrids with disease tolerance resistance and with oil content at least 42% develop forecasting mechanism for sclerotinia disease as long as we don't have resistant varieties we can develop forecasting system so that farmers could apply the fungicides at the right time actually when it is required then i am proposing that allocate more resources budget to develop hybrids which are actually not taking place earlier now i think we should need to focus on this uh, side up again we should acquire clear field technology on a national basis and replace those Uh, low yielding brassica compestis varieties approve crispr cas and gmo technology for our herbicide tolerance insect tolerance or disease tolerance purposes also and in the last as this crop has lots of inherent constraints beyond the control of farmers itself government should incentivize the farmers also to expand the area or to grow the crop in a very effective manner that's all i wanted to propose myself thank you very much chairman and all the dignitaries thank you thank you dr arora it was a very nice summarized uh, your uh, thoughts of how do we really strategize the uh, uh, the program to improve or increase the productivity of mustard now uh, uh, there are i think quite a good amount of questions which i find in the chat box but uh, what i have suggest that uh, uh, the organizer particularly neeta and their group kindly compile all those questions and they they can be replied because now the time has come we are already without any break continuously started from 10:30 uh, i have only to summarize on these two three issues one thing is that uh, the reduction in area is a very important thing which has been pointed out by uh, sujata i think the reasons for reduction has not been properly analyzed they need to be analyzed she has also said is, is are there competitive crops what has happened in pulses where the production was increased but at the same time mainly because of msp 
not only msp it is the procurement that has mattered much now the second aspect is i think universal application of sulfur and boron is a must which has been pointed out boron. and can we increase the area under micro irrigation these are some of those very important thing which need to change i think in case of oil palm i was not very happy we can't have is the intercropping in oil palm from i think the area which is targeted something like 27 million hectares or uh, this, this is i think not possible we we'll have to really restrict it because there are already inherent problem and the computer the the economics of our uh, palm oil is not that good as we get it from malaysia so we we'll have to really compete in that respect how do we economize that and then only we can do some uh, more area increase in mustard somebody has he has uh, the director pointed out about the what they call it as uh, uh, spurious seeds i was really concerned about it because what has happened is that many times i find in mustard the seed chain is broken from breeder seed to foundation seed and foundation to certified seed i think it is not properly done and that is why it is that thing happening is and also uh, high oleic acid i am happy that we need to have a very separate program i think we should insist icar to have separate program and financing for that so these are some of the observations which i thought i would love like to comment upon and i would like to uh, now request my co chairman dr sharma is he around there dr sharma dr sk sharma if he is there uh, can he summarize now uh, the entire uh, Uh, session uh, the first session of uh, brainstorming dr sharma uh, thank you. yeah thank you sir uh, sir it was uh, very nice to listen to the uh, all the uh, directors of the oil seed crops under your chairmanship and uh, you have very uh, nicely uh, you know summarized also and uh, gave the introductory remarks also sir i have a few points to mention Uh, which are in my mind uh, would like to share with you that uh, uh, as it has been said that uh, we need to increase the total productivity uh, so that we minimize the import and also we are exporting a uh, few oil seed crops so to uh, achieve this objective i think we need to have multi Pronged uh, strategies and uh, multidisciplinary strategies. There has to be two strategies: one, to increase the yield per unit area. Number one, increasing the yield uh, yield per unit area. And the second important strategy is to increase the area. You know how to expand the area. First of all, I will come to. Uh, increasing the yield per unit area sir this is uh, all applicable to all crops uh, the first important point comes in improvement is the uh, identification of trade specific germplasm uh, what we call as now trade discovery uh, in these uh, important crops and uh, the second important is that uh, uh, we need to have genetic uh, uh based broadening or genetic enhancement or the pre breeding using the diverse germplasm and also using the wild relatives uh, either of the primary or secondary gene pool uh, wherever we feel that the uh, variability is very limited we need to create a huge variability and some of the uh, latest techniques of speed breeding genomic selection can be put to use uh the another important point is that uh, which has also been mentioned uh, by all that uh, the biotechnological tools uh, uh, to which we have now access like marker assisted selection or back cross uh, 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 selection association mapping qtl mapping and uh, 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 i think these will go in a uh in a long way uh, in having a faster uh, improvement of our varieties and the crops and so the another important point that you mentioned uh, is the uh, transgenics uh, as you said in the beginning that uh, 
and uh, it has been pointed out by Dr. Aurora and also many directors. Uh, I think uh, this is the area, particularly for uh, disease resistance in different crops and also for the other characters. Uh, though uh, the policies are not favorable at the moment, but I think we should keep on working uh, in the area of uh, GMO development of transgenic so that whenever uh, there is a signal or whenever the policy makers decide, I think the product can be introduced. Then uh, development of hybrids uh, in oil palm, uh, which has been mentioned is uh, very important. And also in brassica and also in sunflower, safflower, I think this area is required to be strengthened. The another important uh, point is that uh, the uh, the seed, the availability of the seed, this has been invariably mentioned by all the directors that there has to be the availability of the quality seed uh, in all important crops. And uh, uh, few, uh, I mean, on 5th September, sir, there was a seminar in the Pulse Institute also. And there they said like that the seed has been a very important component in improving the uh, overall yield uh, level of the uh, uh, pulse crops. So I think, sir, uh, there is a need to have uh, uh, more number of seed production hubs, community oil seed banks, seed village systems, seed cooperatives, societies, and so on and so The second important point that I said, sir, in the beginning is bringing additional area under oil seed crops. Sir, uh, this has been discussed in the Pulse Brain Storming session also on 5th of September. There they also mentioned that the area can be rice, such as rice fellows or fellows of other crops. I think some area is the same. Uh, and obviously the competing crops are many, the oil seeds, the pulses, and maybe other crops. And farmers are very clever, sir that uh, they only grow those crops where they find uh, there's a more of profitability. So uh, the, uh, bringing more area means either we can have a horizontal expansion in the rice fellows or fellows of other crops, or we can have, uh, you know, intercropping and, uh, you know, uh, we are intercropping the different crops in the different parts of the country, states and uh, different ecologies, sir. The another point is that uh, cutting the post harvest uh, losses, uh, particular and also the value addition is also very important area so that the uh, oil seeds, particularly of certain oil seed crops can be put to varieties of uses like industrial, pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, cosmetological purposes. Uh, this is a very, and uh, uh, there has to be incentive to farmers for growing the oil seed crops. Uh, that is that is only when there is a reduction in the cost of cultivation that could be done by mechanical harvesting, threshing, and also the uh, the MSP. That's very important, uh, and uh, efficient transfer of technologies to the farmers, public-private partnership. Uh, I think, sir, these are certain. Uh, important areas which could be helpful. And sir, I would like to mention one or two points uh, for a oil palm, uh, which is not an annual crop, which is a, uh, a plantation crop. Uh, sir, oil palm is a highly cross-pollinated, highly heterozygous, and uh, this is a crop which requires a different uh, set of approach. And uh, here, every plant is different from the other plant. So here, uh, the tissue culture has a very important role to play for the production of uh, uh, mother uh, or a seed orchards and uh, to provide the superior quality planting material. Tissue culture has a very important role and the hybridization uh, between the diverse types would be very useful and the development of the hybrids uh, is very important in the case of oil palm. And sir, the, some of the biotechnology tools like micro-assisted uh, selection or a breeding is very important in case of oil palm, where uh, we can always select the desirable types right in the beginning of it. So uh, these studies are very important. And lastly, sir, the double haplide breeding, 
uh, it's very important. Uh, this should be taken up in case of oil palm because in oil palm, you know, every plant differs from the other plant unless uh, the, the plantation is of the tissue culture. So if we have the double, uh, double haploidy breeding program, that could help us to have parents which are homozygous and, and the hybrid created out of it will be high yielding and uh, will have more productivity. So these are the few points which I thought to talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. It was very nice uh, summarizing. I think uh, we come to the end of this particular uh, session. Uh, uh, and it is good that Neeta has organized the second session tomorrow. And then the third session day after tomorrow. I think it is very good. So Neeta, uh, I would like to continue from our side. Now, Thank you so much, sir. You can. Yeah. Uh, Any formal formality uh, now? Yes, sir. One minute, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, we have compiled all uh, suggestions and queries from the chat box, and Dr. Manoj will be reading out those queries and suggestions. Good afternoon. This is from. C. Lavanya from IIOR that seed yield per unit area of oil seed crops are under red fit conditions is decreasing mainly. We are neglecting the most basic components, soil type and nutrient interaction with the genotype. So INM or just application of chemical fertilizer without considering the role of microbes will lead to the yield plateau in many crops. This needs to be urgent attention what she thinks. Good. Second. You can read some of the yeah. important ones, the rest you can compile them. Yeah, from P.S. Sandhu, this is that PIU has already released the variety resistant to white resist rust, which are also canola type. Very good. And then we have from P.T. Mina, that is quick development of quality seed of new variety must be expedited to reach the farmers within a short span of time. Dr. Naveen Singh has said from IRI that translation of breeder seed to foundation and certified seed is very low in Indian mustard. So measures yeah. for improving the proper utilization of breeder seed need to be ensured to meet the demand of quality seed in the country. That I already pointed out in my summarization. Yeah. Okay. And Dr. P. D. Mina has said that is it possible to integrate groundnut and mustard in Rajasthan? to enhance the overall oil seed production in the country. No, there are separate areas where that can be, South Gujarat, South Rajasthan can be more of groundnut and North can be more of uh, mustard. From Atar Singh, it is that area is declining of oil seed need, to, need not to worry, but hybrids are available, can be exploited explored for enhancing production and productivity. Oil seed have less press and insect load during storage. Good. And Dr. Vijay Singh Meena has said that new variety of seed of mustard needs to be multiplied and distributed among the farmers. And Dr. R.P. Dwayti has suggested that Bundelkhand region of central India is very important agroclimatic zone for oil seed production and post harvest enterprises should be including value addition. <coughs> and Dr. P. D. Mina has said why, why rare feed mustard in rice fallow cannot be grown because groundnut, sunflower, and sesam was mentioned in the talk, but not the rare feed mustard. It can also be. And R.P. Dwayti has said that linking of farmers to the market is very important point for all these things to increase the oil seed production. Okay. Okay. So Thank you. that is all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have compiled this is a very good session and I hope that uh, the host will compile all these information and make the presentation in a very compressive manner so that it can be distributed. Nita yes. is there around? Yes, sir. Nita? Yes, I'm very much can here. Very much here. Yeah. Can these uh, presentation be compiled 
and so that they can be sent to all director it is not necessary that the director of groundnut should know also about mustard that is right. very important otherwise right. what is happen is we are all sectionalized it should not happen you have an integrated that's why we have integrated brainstorming today so yes. thank you very much and i would also receive it will be very good for me if i can get uh, the copy of the presentation so that i can also suggest a few things thank you very much yeah sure sir yeah sure sir uh sir now i invite dr yeah. sanjay gupta to convey vote of thanks to all our speakers and chairperson and co-chairperson dr sanjay gupta please honorable chair <coughs> co-chair i on behalf of all oil seed institutes extend my heartfelt thanks to dr c d mai for accepting our uh, invitation to chair the session and delivering a thoughtful lecture we are really thankful to you sir all oil seed institutes are thankful to dr sharma ex vice chancellor himachal pradesh krishi vishwavidyalaya palampur and dr rajendra prasad uh, vice chancellor uas bangalore for co-chairing the session we are thankful to dr sk sharma who has been our mentor and guiding force to in organization in organizing this event uh, we are thankful to dr rajendra prasad for <coughs> booking the date in uh, booking the date of the meet very well in the advance from his busy schedule and also delivering a lecture his lecture was really very fruitful because we could come to know about the latest technologies which are which are being undertaken in seed area i am thankful to dr r k arora director tierra agro biotech for delivering a thoughtful lecture Uh, in which he has very nicely pointed out all the present status and the future strategies for different problems which the this rape seed mustard crops are facing and how we can improve the productivity through breeding then we are i am thankful to all our directors so uh, for framing the entire plan of this uh, brainstorming meeting making frequent online meetings contacting all the speakers and execution of the program i am also th thankful to them for providing a brief uh, a brief of all the crops in a nutshell way so that we can we could understand the problems which we are facing in research in different oil seed i am thankful to members of coordination committee session conveners online meeting coordination committee press conveners press co con press coverage committee and all of the reporters at last but not the least i am thankful to each and every person who was involved in this uh, session directly or indirectly for the organization of this session thank you very much thank you everyone uh, uh, sir i hope to see you in all the three sessions sir i will try my level best to be there thank you so much thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you thanks a lot thank you sir are you sir dr sharma sir are you also must join every day sir okay yeah because we will get a lot of input from you yeah okay okay thank you sir thank you thank you thank you dr sharma sir dr sharma is our rsc chairman it's our privilege so <laughs>
and successful.